Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast and part 23 of our Dungeons and Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion. Still recovering from being dead or unconscious, the squad are in a race to retrieve Cassius Briar's body before the enemy does, and they run into a few surprises on the way. All right, well, welcome. This is, uh, it's been a long time. Uh, we're on episode, uh, or the 23rd uh, episode of Jericho Squad. Uh, I guess, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Lori and Catalina and Joe for participating in our catch-up episode. And you guys got some extra experience points for that, and I hope that was a good refresher. And for people who didn't make it, hopefully you were able to watch, because we did some, uh, we did a whole bunch of catching up. Just a refresher, because it's been a while. I don't remember when our last episode was. After the destruction of Midian, After the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions. The Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. squad having lost a major fight with a minor sea deity found themselves on the brink of death and for three of them actually were dead uh, so in Jericho's London headquarters they were able to help revive Chertovir, Musette and Zoe and Zoe is now called Anastasia uh, so right now you wait you're you're uh, you've gone home and gone to sleep and you wake up feeling bruised and battered and those of you who died are feeling particularly bad. Uh, all of you are taking a minus three penalty to attack rolls, saving throws, and ability checks. Um, so if you haven't done a long rest, you can go ahead and push that button. Uh, I don't know if it's been done already, but uh, that'll reset all your hit points and spells and whatnot. But you just have to remember that whenever you make uh, an attack roll or a saving throw or an ability check that you do a minus three. So that also includes skills and stuff too. While in the underworld, Shurduvir renewed a vow to the gulfs and swore to retrieve the body of Cassius Briar uh, uh -huh. from his, for his infernal patrons. And so th this is on the top of, of your mind when you wake up and you can feel the wariness uh, of the rest of your friends as, as if it were your own for some reason. Uh, and, and as you um, kind of uh, wipe the sleep out of your eyes, you realize that something's different. And uh, you feel on the top of your head, you have actually two insectoid antenna on the top of your head. Me? Yep. Oh my gosh. Like, not again. Like, yeah. You know, I had bug eyes once and now I got antennas. I go like, yeah, you, you made it really clear that you didn't want bug eyes. So right. they. Oh. Okay, well, this is horrible. This is terrible. I'm deformed for life. I don't know how I'm going <laughs> to deal with this thing. Get <laughs> great 5G. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. this will be temporary, just like the time when I got eyes, guys. I'm sorry about this. This is gross. <laughs> so uh anastasia and you while well, you feel like your head's in a fog and you can't help but notice a strange kind of discomfort uh in your sleeping position something feels like it's lodged in your back and it's causing part of your back to have lost its circulation so it feels like like when your arm falls asleep when you sleep on it funny uh so you wake up and as you're feeling around there's there's some kind of strange uh strange limbs on your back 
they're hard to they're hard to reach and so you can't you know and they're and they're asleep just because of the way your arms are you, you they're 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 hard to uh hard to to, to reach but uh, that's all you know so far do they have fingers or are they just kind of protrusions uh like make an investigation check with okay. minus three okay the investigation. I rolled a six, so that would be a three. Okay. Yeah, you just you just can't reach them, and you can't feel anything right now. Maybe if you you might want to just go at show somebody and ask them. Okay. Who who all is around? Is everybody around? Well, you you just woke up in your own oh. bedroom, so you'd have to kind of go to the to the central meeting room there where the, where everybody has breakfast uh, okay and it's late you guys all kind of slept in a little bit it's it's around uh 10 30 or so okay having been so. dead kind of took it out of you I, it, there are no there are no mirrors in my room i can't <laughs> don't feel too bad because i got an antenna yeah, well, you could see yours. You could feel yours. Yeah, yeah you could look. In, you could look in the mirror. Yeah, I, uh -huh. I would imagine you would probably have brought a mirror or gotten one. Which is kind of uh. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what you see on your back are um, these kind of uh, malformed wings. Not malformed, but they they look uh, they look like they're brand new and they're still maybe growing. Chicken wings. Yeah. Is it, is it like is it like the dark backward movie where the guy grows an arm in his back? <laughs> it, probably I, I more like X Men. Movie. Like like okay. X Men, that little boy, you know, okay. that becomes is angel. It, sorry, is it just one or two? Two. Yay, I'm turning into Angel from X Men. <laughs> yeah. The, the old chicken chicken leg. Yeah. And Musette, you wake up to find out you don't have any extra limbs. <laughs> so you're you're uh, but you're still feeling pretty horrible, um, you know, and you and you have the uh, minus three penalty as well. Uh, everybody else is everybody else who didn't die but almost died, you know, um, Richard and and Ralph. You're you're still you're feeling pretty horrible, but you don't have that penalty. Yeah, all right. <laughs> they they don't get the minus three. No, no, we live. They didn't, okay. nope, they didn't that's right. die. Yeah. That's right. We're the ones who went through the traumatic thing. We yeah. Suck. <laughs> yeah, they they were knocked unconscious but they passed all their death saving throws. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Fortunately. <laughs> yeah. So I think I remember Richard saved our butt, right? Richard uh, well, it, it, Ralph Joe? and Ralph and Richard but mostly Ralph and Richard. the mem the members of of squad 1. Right, uh, right. Yeah. But you guys weren't no, I just... you know, awake to see it happen. Okay, so yeah, I'm in my room, right? My last throw. Yeah. Okay. I open up. I open up the door and I go into the the meeting area, and I go like, guys, I, you know, this happened again. I I, I got antenna now. Uh, how are you guys feeling? A little hungover. Yes. What's going on? Uh, Never seen anything feel, like this before. I feel terrible, and now I got antenna. Great. Is I'm gonna sleep with these. I don't think uh, so. I think it's it's it, it might be because of the deal I did. You remember? Oh, I don't think you were here when I got bug eyes, were you? No. Yeah, it happens. Nah. That's what happens when you make a deal with the gulfs. So, um, Chertovir, make an intelligence check. Okay. Intelligence check with a minus three? Or yeah. is just just for attacks? Yeah, well, no, it's, it's with a minus three. Yes, sir. Let's see what we got here. Intelligence... And I get 18 minus 3, that's 15. You noticed that you're actually able to um, push your thoughts into other people's heads. So you can uh. give that a try if you want. You can speak tele telepathically with, uh, with other people. Ugh, I got a splitting headache. So you can, okay. you can speak to them. And I if can they speak reply, to them? you can hear that, yeah. But I have to feel some sort of connection, right? You 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 can start a conversation with somebody telepathically, and they can reply to it. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna think something while I'm looking at Richard, and uh, and I'm gonna think, man, why do I feel so bad? And and what happened last night? I don't know, brother. I feel Wait. all glassy and like sandpaper on my eyeballs. So I don't feel good. I don't remember much of anything from last Wait, night. Wait, did I say that aloud? Uh, I think. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking my my thoughts directly to you. Okay, but but uh, but it's weird that you can hear me in your mind, right? So I'm like, I just I looked at you and I thought that, and then you replied to me, and I'm like, what happened here? I th I you thought said I. You said that to me out loud, didn't you? No, I didn't. Uh, I was just thinking. I was looking at you. I guess. Let me try something else. Let me look at Ralph, and let me think. Uh, I'll look at Ralph, and I'll be like, mm, I'm thinking to myself, man, what? I wonder what he's gonna want for breakfast today. Who said that? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I just thought something. I, I guess now I, I can project my thoughts into you guys. I, you can hear me when I think, uh, looking at you. Stop projecting into me. You All right. Protection. <laughs> projection. I think it's these new antenna guys. Sorry, I can't control this thing. You can this control is weird. it. I, I, I can. Okay. Yes. yes, I can. I can, but I'm getting used to it. This is weird, guys. This is very weird. I don't know how... This Third might come in handy in combat, but... Uh, it's kind of weird. When I get into your head, I can kind of like feel a little bit like you feel, and it's kind of strange and unsettling. Uh, Bentley uh, Bentley comes out and he says, Hey, uh, so last night I, I gassed up the, the minivan and I put extra gas canisters in there. I remembered you wanted to go to Darthur City. If I want to get rid of these antenna... Um, I gotta, I gotta fulfill my part of the bargain, and I'm sorry to drag you guys into this again, but I think we should try to get Cassius Breyer's body so I can send it over to, to the Gulfs as he escaped from them. That was part of my deal with the Gulfs, and now I gotta retrieve him and and send it back to them. So we should probably try to make our way to Durther City. All right, thanks, Bentley. I'm still very confused about these new antennas today. Does anyone else need to do anything here in the city before we head off to, to Durther City? I mean, should we come up with a plan? No, um, I want to be done with Cassius Briar once and for all. Let's go. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, Bentley, is there a way that we can use the, the stone transport thing to... Oh, there's nothing on the other side, right? I don't think there's any, like, portals on the other side at Durther City, are there? Uh, no, I mean I think there used there used to be one at the consulate, uh, but I, but there's no one there just to uh, arrange it so we can get there. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Maybe if we get there the old-fashioned way, maybe we can set that up, and that would have a we would have a little outpost there. Let's. Uh, I guess we gotta get into the van and uh, see if we can go to Durther City. That's a few hours away, right? Yeah, well, so and pack actually, up our your, breakfast to go. Your brother, your your brother Drovo wanted to uh, um, has mentioned that he wanted to go to Darthur City because he wants to reestablish his the the consulate there. Well, yeah, that would be a great uh, a great addition to that outpost at Darthur City. All right, let me see if I can call my brother Drovo through the uh, Jericho phone. Uh, I'm gonna flip over to Drovo's image and I'm gonna call him. In my mind, I'm gonna be like, "Hey, Drovo, this is your brother. Can you hear me?" Ah, uh, yes, yes. Hello. Hey, sure, Dovir. Hey. How are you? Hey, hey, Drovo. Um, so, brother, I, you know, I, I you remember that one time you were really upset at me because I promised the Gulfs that I would give them Cassius Briar. I wasn't there for that. Um, well, you were there when when we defeated him, and then I, I remember I put him through a portal. Yes. Okay. Well, he escaped, and um, you know, um, we ended up finding him and 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 fighting him um, again. And uh, it was in Durther City, but now um, you can't see me, but uh, because because he escaped the gulfs. Um, I'm, I'm, 
I'm tethered to uh, retrieve his body and give him back to the gulfs again. And I've got an antenna now, apparently. What, what are the gulfs? Well, the gulfs are the, this dimension where these powerful creatures live. I like think the for, Inovo? Well, it's kind of like, do you know anything about the Fifth Dominion religion? It's, it's I think, what the humans called uh, the Inferno. No, I don't, but that doesn't sound good. No. We call it hell. Sounds hot. That's right. That's right. Uh, and, yeah, these creatures are really, really powerful demons. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, to escape that thing we went to in Africa, I had to make a deal with them that I would give them that I would give them his soul in exchange for uh, escaping that hell on earth that we went to. But anyway, so we have to go to Durther City, and I know we have a consulate there, and I was wondering, um, since we're going there to retrieve Cassius Breyer's body, would you like to tag along? Uh, yes, actually, I've been, uh, I've been wanting to go there, but uh, knowing what's been going on lately, I didn't feel comfortable going by myself. Right, I understand. Uh, well, are you at the Kesperit? Can you meet us here at the Jericho Squad Headquarters, please? I could be there in about an hour. All right, sounds good. I guess we'll we'll have some breakfast while we wait for you, okay? Okay, that sounds good. All right. Thank you. I'll pack my things and be right there. Ah, uh, okay, I'm hungry. Who wants breakfast? So ba wait, 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 I gotta put my wing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, a little wing, a little wing. A little chicken wing. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, Bentley, what's uh, what do we have for breakfast? Uh, you know, you guys are always make, making me make breakfast. You know, I'm I'm a part of the team also. Okay, how about I go out and I get us, I pick something out from uh, the market outside. I can I can go there and do that real quick. And what I'll do you start guys the want? coffee. I'll start coffee. Who wants fried zarzi? Who wants uh who wants uh squid? Anybody want any squid for breakfast? No, no nobody just I'll oh, take squid. Good. You'll take squid? Cool. Uh who wants some skewers or something? I can go get something. Alright, cool, cool. I'll eat anything. I'm hungry. What do you guys want to drink? Coffee? I all think right. we all want coffee. Oh yeah. <laughs> Think Ralph Sorry, I'm, I'm feeling really bad, and and you remember that that uh, Bentley had also died. Right, right. Yes, yeah. I, I, you should stay here and recover, Bentley. You've taken really good care of us over over the last few weeks, and uh, this time breakfast is on me, and I'm going to go out and check the door, see if the spell is holding, and uh, yeah. So, I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, okay. you're able to open the door. Okay, I open the door and I check to see if the spell that I put on the door is still working. Okay, yeah, make an arcana check. Uh, arcana with check. With a minus three, so... Yeah, so it's plus seven, minus three, so plus four. Okay, so I got seven. I'm giving seven you already total? the final... Yeah, the total. Oh, okay, you don't I got know. ten minus three is seven, okay. All right. Yeah, my, your, uh, your head hurts and you just... It's, it's, it's like uh, too much okay. right now. I'll check again when I come back. Um, all right, so I go to the market and I'm getting food. You're able to find what you're looking for. You're feeling hungry, but also kind of a little woozy and a little bit nauseous too. So it's kind of it's kind of difficult, but uh, you manage to gather everything up that you're looking for. Uh, you've been here long enough now that you you know you know where to find things at the markets. All right, and, uh, so I come back with my arms full of food. Yeah, you know, drink drink holders and stuff from the Fifth Dominion, and I uh, come you, back. Over here. All right, here we go, guys. Breakfast. Woo! Yay! Thank you. And Good I am. You the, admit, uh, I'm getting a little tired of waffles. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> if you don't say it to anybody else, this is courtesy of the discretionary fund at the Casper Library. Well, thank you. You guys right. also do make a salary, yeah. But okay. they're they're coins in in uh, in the dominions. But gotcha. um, I figured it just everything's just a one to one ratio of U.S. dollars and Great Britain pounds and the coins because I don't want to do monetary conversion. Sure, sure. Yeah, I get it. Yep, yep, yep. So we can spend our coins on things. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, yeah, and in fact, if you brought in, like, if you had actual, like, cash, you know, U.S. dollars or Great Britain pounds, those you, those are actually, because they're, like, collector's yeah. items, they're they're worth more. Um, I mean, the actual, the actual exchange bad. rate is 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 one to one, but but as an antique, you know, or as a as a curiosity from another world, they're they've got some value. I think we we've we've gathered up a lot of money uh, and loot from battles and stuff, plus our yeah. salary. We're we're doing good. Yeah, I, you you make about ten thousand dollars a month. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! The equivalent of ten thousand U.S. dollars a month. I'm yeah. rich. Yeah, I can buy a lot of flies with that. Finally yeah. made. Well, there's, the there's a lot of hazard pay in there. Gotcha. Yep, makes yep. sense. I thought we were doing this for ten thousand Jericho bucks. Honor and one million altruism. dollars, Mr. <laughs> Jericho. Yeah. It's philanthropy. Right. All right. All right. Okay, uh, that's cool. So we're having breakfast and waiting for Drovo, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So mm, you, so you made squid. fried fried zarzi. <laughs> I guess. And, 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 yeah, those are those are gigantic flies. So you yeah, feel they... a little bit like a cannibal now. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fried <laughs> zarzi, yeah. <laughs> those giant bugs. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. I'm having some squid. I like tentacle stuff. So. Uh, and I, I've missed my squid breakfast and my fermented fish. Uh, yep. So All when right. is Drovo? Driving? Yeah. So as you're as you're finishing up breakfast, if you guys don't have anything you want to talk about during breakfast, we can move skip ahead. So we're uh, gonna get in the truck and then we're gonna go capture a dead body. Yeah. So. And let's go. Do we remember where he was left behind? It was one of those. It was in the it, main square of, it, of. Yeah, it was pretty close to the to the front gate as you come in, where you okay. left both him and the the hand. Uh, the, the hand, hand of Apex of, Amendios, Yeah, which was a Nolianak. Who had a number for a name? One hundred and twelve. One hundred and twelve. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, are, I'm, are, are we walking out to the van now? Well, like right now, if you don't want to wait for Drovo, you could. Okay, because I kind of want to pull Musette off to the side because she's the only other female here, and I want her to take a look at something happening with my back, and I don't feel comfortable asking the boys. <laughs> oh, I got antenna. Now. That was good. Okay. On the way back. Oh, okay. It's hard to tell if she's not here or if the microphones or the cameras just not picking her up. She's she'll be back momentarily. Okay. Well, in the meantime, uh, cool. while you're waiting for Musette, uh, the uh, Drovo uh, appears at the door. He knocks. Hi, Drovo. Uh, hey. Thank Open you for door. waiting for me. You're welcome, brother. Um, yeah. So, uh, what we were thinking? Do you remember if the consulate has any sort of like portal there that we could use? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yes. Uh, but not, you know, we, we'll have to go set it up first. Yeah. That's, that's terrific. Once we get there, we'll, we'll find a way to get to the consulate and, uh, we'll, we'll get that set up and situated. It would save you a lot of gas. Oh yeah, for sure. So what's to expect? I know you've been to Darthur city and, and, I, and I remember you described it to the, Jericho organization, but what's waiting for us there? So that's what I'm unsure. Um, I, I, what Cassius was trying to do, I think he was trying to find a way to reunite the hand, the heart, uh, and the wings of Apexamendios and possibly bring, bring Apexamendios back or cause some sort of, I'm not sure what was supposed to happen, but um, maybe it was trying to tap into Apex Amendio's power using that that trinity, but uh, basically the hand of uh, Apex Amendio's was the Nullianak uh, that we that we defeated there in Durther City, along with uh, Cassius, who was um, 
And the dragon, we met a dragon also on the way there who was the wings of Apexamendios that we also defeated. But I think we still have to find out the heart of Apexamendios, and I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do that. But right now, all we need to do is uh, uh, retrieve Cassius' body, and maybe we can do some investigation in Durther City as well. I, I, I guess I just meant what's happening What's happening there. Where are all the people? We hadn't, we'd had lost contact right. with them. Well, either Cassius or the Nullianac or whatever, they might have they might have killed all those people. Uh, we don't know. There were a few bodies there, but not a whole bunch. So most of the other people had disappeared. I see. So Durther City right now is kind of a ghost town. All right, then. Um, well, I had hoped to reestablish the consulate there, but if there are no people, no trade... No supplies. It may be difficult for me to stay. Right, right. So I don't know. I mean, we do have to get to the heart of what happened to the rest of the people. Um, I don't know. It's really, really strange because there were a lot of people there and, and there's a lot of people missing. So I'm not sure where they ended up. I was going to bring my assistant to help me set up the consulate, but now I'm thinking it's better to just scout it out first. Yeah, let's do that once... To retrieve Cassius, we'll scout out Durther City and see what we can find. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'm ready to go when you are. And and uh, Laurie, you were um, you you had wanted to take uh, to talk to um, Musette. Musette. Musette, come here for a second. <laughs> I feel I'm listening. I don't think Chertavir is the only one with something going on. There's something, I feel something on my back. And I, can you look? I don't want to ask the boys. Okay. Oh. Uh, what is it? What is it? What's, what's, what's going on? <laughs> Surprise, they, they, you have yeah. wings. <laughs> and and they, wings. they, yeah, they do look a little bit like chicken wings. They're, they, they've got feathers, but the feathers are not all grown in and they're pretty so scraggly. Gross. Ew. <laughs> they're beautiful. Your wings are adorable, but they're very tiny. You have little baby wings. Oh, okay. Um, well, I, I need you to- what they do. They start I, do them. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't even think I can move them. I mean, they just, it, it, I, I thought there was something like wrong. I, well, there is something wrong, but- yeah. Uh, uh, I don't make a dexterity check with a minus three on it. Dexterity check. Here we go. Do, 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 do. You said minus three. Okay. Yeah, so, it's, so, so it's the total would be minus one, I guess, because you've got plus two on there. Okay. So minus one would be a seven. Okay. Yeah. You, you try, but they still feel pretty tingly. I mean, they, they hasn't quite worn the, the, they hasn't quite worn off yet where they fell asleep. And plus, you're not used to the musculature of those things, and and it's just strange. Well, can you keep an eye on me? Because I don't know what's going on, and I don't know if this is going to be a problem. Okie dokie. All right. I don't want to worry the boys, and I definitely don't want to worry Ralph, because he and I have been through a lot. Okay. Thank you. All right. We well, go so back, when you join the group, when you get back to uh, when you get over to the uh, the minivan, uh, people have loaded themselves in. Who's going to drive? I'll drive. Okay. Yeah, Richard, you can. And and I'm assuming that you have experience driving cars and vehicles and stuff. Motorcycles. Okay. All right, that sounds good. Um, so you head off, uh, and you're heading towards Darthur City. Um, it's going to be a 12-hour drive to get there, and it's about 11.30 right now. So it's going to be late at night by the time. Well, 12 hours to get to the halfway point, which, oh. if you remember right, was kind of like a waypoint with the cabin. It's also yeah. where you'd fought the, the, the wings of Apexamandios. Right. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 <laughs> bottles of beer. That took the 12 hours. Oh, wow. Um, Everybody I make guess... a sanity check. 
<laughs> I guess uh, I guess I could uh, 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 bring up. Oh, I think oh. when I was talking to Drovo, I don't think I, I I gave him the right information. It was the hand of the unbeheld, the heart of Apexamendios, and the wings. No, the heart of the Aboriginal, yeah. the hand of the unbeheld, and the wings of Apexamendios. That's right. Yep. That's okay. It. There we go. That's Yay. It. I'm watching yeah. the last episode while we're doing this. Oh, okay. And so, you know, since you guys aren't driving, if if the two of you wanted to spend that time trying to uh, work your new appendages, you could also. I'm like, hey, guys, look. I can make my antenna touch. <laughs> yeah. Close. What else can you make it do? I'm gonna go like beep, 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 beep. I'm gonna be like 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 <laughs> bottles of beer. Do that. Yeah, you just learned that one from Musette. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, humans are crazy. That song won her a grammar, Grammy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar. At, at yeah. least it's not and, Baby and, Shark. Robocop. Yeah. Yeah, and and um and. Anastasia, if you wanted to you try, if you, you would eventually have gotten control of your wings. You know, I think over the course of 12 hours, that would be a lot of Yeah, but they're only this big, so. Yeah, but you can, you can feel yourself moving them around after a while. You get, you start to get used to them. I'm going to scratch my back because of the feathers. Yeah. All right, so. Okay. What, we, uh, we, so, we yeah, you, you, you pull up to the cabin looks kind of unassuming you see a scorched mark on the ground where you had burned the the body of the the wings of Apexamendios, but the actual body itself is gone the room you know it was pretty charred up and messed up and you had cut open its head and uh -huh. taken um one of the um the righteous out of its the center of its head was kind of that was its brain yeah. and you had killed that and i think ralph ate it uh but yeah, the, the the remains of the carcass are gone. Okay, does it look like it was just kind of... Okay, I examine my surroundings to see if there's anything yeah. around. Uh, make an investigation check with minus three. Okay, so investigation check with minus three comes up to eight. Okay, uh, you don't... You, you're tired, and I'm it's not, dark, yeah. and you don't, you're not sure, you don't see anything. Do I see any tracks um, moving away from the charred spot where the corpse was? No, mm -hmm. not not with your eight. No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm like, well, I I hope that the corpse of that dragon got taken by something else and not just. I'm pretty sure it was dead. So. Uh, what do you I, mean by something else? I know. That something was a else, big dragon. That means there's dragon. something bigger. Right, so maybe, yeah, maybe we should put our little uh, tiny hut up uh, when we take our rest so nothing can come in and, uh, and hit us while we're sleeping. Right. Oh, in, inside of the cabin? Yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my spells and I'm going to make that little tiny hut that we can all fit in and sleep in, just, uh, just in case. Okay. I'm going to mark that as used. Gotcha. All right. Because so, I know that uh, this area is kind of weird, and it's, I mean, I can't see anything. It's really dark outside. Are you taking watch, or are you just... Yeah, I can take watch. All going to sleep. Well, I guess I can take watch for a while. Okay. It's a 10-foot radius immobile dome of force, and the nine creatures of medium size or smaller can fit inside and, uh, and be there with me. All creatures and objects are barred from passing into it. Spells and other magical effects can't extend through the dome or be cast through it. A little conversation while we're eating our, our food. Yeah, and, and is it everybody going to sleep in the dome, or do some people want to sleep outside of it? Yeah. I sleep here. No, I'm going to sleep in the dome. I don't want to be out wherever the dragon body stealing thing is. I want to sleep outside. I got gas. I'm gonna sit outside. A outside right. the in, in the cabin or outside yeah, like outside outside? Of, outside of the dome, but within the confines of the cabin, please. Okay. 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 I'll sleep it's... under stars. 
As long as Ralph doesn't fart up a storm in there, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, and and Shergavir, you were taking watch, but you're from inside of the dome. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm sitting inside the dome, but looking at the door inside the cabin. Is it transparent? The dome is opaque from the outside of any color, but it's transparent from the inside. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. there we go. Yeah. Okay. So you're and you're watching the door and. Um... I'm, I'm crisscross applesauce, just kind of like meditating okay. and, and keeping watch. Okay. Uh, so my little, little antennas are going like this. Get a constitution check. Uh, constitution. With, yeah, with minus three. Sir. So I've got an 11 minus three. That's an eight. I'm just rolling really low this time. You try really hard not to, but you did fall asleep. Richard. Oh, true. I'm not taking watch. I'm just smoking. So you're still Out awake? sleeps. Richard, it's like, mid, it's like midnight right now. You start to see this sort of green mist floating up around the uh, around you. Uh, make Ralph. a dexterity, uh, dexterity saving throw. Dexterity. Yes. Get away from this. Sixteen. So you take um, seventeen acid damage. Jesus, what? Yeah, you managed to uh, you managed to I'm avoid most deals. of it, but you still you still take some damage. You kept it from getting in your eyes and and really hurting you badly. But Ooh. what kind of damage did I take? Is it like skin damage? Is it like yeah, abrasive it's damage? Yeah, it's burning. This this uh, acid mist is floating up all around you. Okay, yeah. And that so mist you... came into the cabin, or was I outside the cabin when I was smoking? Uh, you were inside of the cabin. And is the cabin exit blocked by the dome? I don't know, Trudovir. Where did you put it? It's you inside. Were... It's inside the the cabin. It's in the center of the cabin. Is it like a one room cabin? And it's like a ten foot radius dome inside the cabin. And I was I fell asleep looking at the door from inside the cabin, from inside the dome. So is there enough space for him? He he's not blocked from getting out of the cabin by the dome. no. No. Okay. You put it okay. like in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll have everybody roll initiative right now. 21. And I'm still minus three, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, so I would be an eight. Okay. Ralph rolled a 21. But you have to do the minus. Oh, you don't have the minus. I don't have to do the minus three. three. Right. Okay. I got. I got 14 total. No, no. I got a 10. Okay. I mean, 13 minus 3, that's 10. Yeah. I'm giving you the absolute, you know, total. Yeah, thank you. That makes sense, that there would be, like, an acid monster eating the dragon outside. Or whatever that is. Yeah. Broccoli farts. Broccoli okay, farts. So, um... <laughs> it's actually Ralph's farts that made it up yeah. to Richard. So, <laughs> Ralph would be first. Outside first. For so, Ralph would be everybody first, else is but, dead he, already. but he's asleep. Uh... So, <laughs> next up is Richard. Richard. Yeah. So I freak out and I start stumbling away from all this gas and I'm like, I start banging on the on the dome. I'm like, doom, 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 doom. Guys, get out of here quick. There's some crazy shit happening. Da, 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 da. And I start okay. like kind of running outside of the hut. Okay. Like, yeah, <laughs> I would say that Bam. you could do the, the banging on the, um, you could do the banging on the, um, on the dome as a bonus action and you, that was your movement so you still have an action if you want to do something well so richard oh you you banged on the on the dome and then you ran outside right to the outside of the hut so did i run into more mist uh no no you didn't uh okay. you, the, the mist seemed to all be inside of the cabin oh uh, okay yeah and, and outside I cast you don't mage armor it's 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 dark outside, but you don't see any um, you don't see any kind of creature or anything out there. Um, I run over to the car. I, well, I'm already used my movement. Or is, do I have more movement left? Uh, you yeah, I'd say you moved. Probably you've moved twenty feet. So out of thirty, left? got ten foot left. Okay. Five, ten. I just kind of move uh, 
like 10 foot over in front of the car hood and squat down and draw my gun. I okay. just don't really have anything to do right now because I can't okay. attack mist. Y yeah, you you can hold action so that if something appears, then then you're you would on, you would attack it as soon as it appears. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to hold action okay. with my Cash's Briar's old sword, not my gun. Okay. And and so you're you can move yourself over in front of the hood there. So next up is Musette. Uh, Musette, make a perception check with a negative three. It is 21 minus the three is 18, 18 total. Okay, yeah, you definitely heard um, Richard banging on the dome and you woke up and you even kind of saw him doing that. And there was kind of some, looked like steam coming up off of his body and you saw him run out the front door of the cabin. Uh oh, okay. So uh, first off, I'm gonna go ahead and um, do Bardic Inspiration for uh, Chudavir. I kind of would just like to poke my head. I'm just gonna poke my head outside the the tiny hut. Okay. Because I'm assuming I can't see the smoke. Yeah, yeah. So make a dexterity saving throw with minus three. Okay, 18, so 25 minus three is 22. You're gonna just take half damage. Your face just starts melting off. <laughs> <laughs> And then it just went like really fast, like so you, yeah. You take you take thirteen acid damage when ah! you po poke your head out, and because you 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 jerked your head back really fast because you started to feel it burning, but uh, so you didn't take the full brunt of it. Oh man! Then I tell uh, Trudevier like, hey, I don't know what's going on, but there seems to be some sort of acid smoke haze inside that cabin right now. So I need to figure out how to get outside of that. Can you still do that um, that wind thing? Uh, it'll hurt everyone else that's in the cabin. Oh. Or in the tiny hut with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was saying. It'll, if I do that, it'll kill someone. How big is the uh, cabin itself? Uh, it's it, it, like uh, you can kind of see it on the map. So it's... Okay. Um... Uh, yeah, so it's like one, two, three, it's, four, It's 20 five. feet by 30 feet. Okay. And can I see out the front door? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Um, I think Richard probably left the door open. Okay. Then, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to misty step outside. Okay. Surrounded by silver mist, teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. So just directly out the door, front door. You could make it to like right, kind of right in front of the mist. There, uh, two yeah. spaces in front of the door. It looks like. Okay. I will take it. Oh. Yep. Right there. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. That was where I wanted to go. Okay. Yep. Um, anything else? Nope. All right. And now it is Drovo's turn, and he. I already rolled his perception. He heard that. Um, Oh, okay, I was gonna say, do I need to unclick my misty step and go back inside? No, no, I think that I think that you 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 already took the damage, so I would say that you could just step out and misty step really fast. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, no problem. Um. Okay, but from now on, we know tiny hut. Even if you're inside, you still can't perform magic to go outside. That's yeah, right. I just wouldn't. Sorry, I I'm wouldn't make you take the same damage from an attack two times in your same turn. It doesn't make any sense. So you mean you already you already got hurt by it, so Um sorry about that. I misread that it said it can't extend through the dome and I read yeah. it can, so sorry about that. So I guess it and also another thing is if I leave the dome, the dome disappears. So I'm still inside the dome. Is this thing okay. hurting our oxygen? No. Um oh. inside the dome the atmosphere is comfortable and dry regardless of the weather outside. No, I mean this fog, this Smog no, you, you no. It's not. Uh, it hasn't. It's not getting inside of the uh, inside of the dome at all. Uh, but you said Ralph isn't in the dome. I'm not in the dome. By the the uh, missing remains of the yeah the wings. Yeah. That would be where Ralph sleeps. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, this thing isn't affecting everybody's oxygen then. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Well, it's affecting Richard, no. I guess. Uh, not it's... anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so Drovo makes a run for it. 
Uh, he's going to run outside and try to go over by uh, Richard. Three, he got a three, so he's taking full damage. What? Why did he run out of the hut towards Richard? Because it seemed like Richard was warning him. Right, right, okay. Thirty. He takes 33 damage. But he's on the outside now. He's going to go up on the hood of the car. And he'll do patient defense. And next is Zoe. And then Chertovir will be next after Zoe. So Zoe first make a perception check with minus okay. three. If you could beat a ten, you wake up. Oh, I cannot. I, I thought we would have woken up when Richard banged on the dome. That's what the perception check is for. Gotcha. Yep, so um, Zoe does not wake up. Oh, dear. Yeah, you have to roll a perception check to see. If you okay, up. let's see if I woke up. Minus is was asleep. Perception check. Okay, so my perception check minus three turns out to be 13. Okay, yeah, you uh, you heard him and you're awake. Okay, there's one thing I don't know when I hear a tiny hut's description is can I ha can I let people enter the hut? I think I it's believe, only people yeah, who were in it when it was cast. Okay, that's what I was trying to understand. Okay, so I can't yeah. call people to come back into the hut. And also, we wouldn't make any difference because we wouldn't be able to fight it from the inside. So, okay, I did cast Mage Armor. I guess I'm just going to run outside and follow my brother Drogo and see what's going on. And, and tell everybody else, hey, you guys stay here for now. We'll see what's going on. Okay, make a Constitution saving throw as you run through the mist. Ooh, constitution saving throw. Do minus I have to... Three. to minus three. Okay. Oh, man. I got six. Oh, I, Musette did cast Bardic Inspiration, so that gives me a 1d8, which I can add to an attack or saving roll, right? Yeah, yeah, you can add that. So I'll have to run a, a, a 1d8? Yeah. And add that to my 6? Yes. Oh, okay, cool, cool. I got 7, so 6 plus 7, 13. Okay, you take full damage, which is uh, 22 points. Oh, And the tiny hut disappears. Yeah, right. okay, right, yeah, right, the right. Tiny hut disappears. So everybody is in the fog who was inside it. Yeah. Just Zoe at this point? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay, Zoe, make a constitution saving throw minus three. Where are you? I'm sorry, guys. I, I just said if I left it, it would disappear, and I just ran out of it like an idiot. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so you take full damage. Ah! Obviously, you wake you wake up from this. <laughs> I'm the so. real enemy here. He sabotaged everyone. You take uh, 26 points of, of acid. Nico, damage. get out of there. Yes. All right. 26, he said. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 26. Oh, one quick thing. So, Ryan, when I ran out of the hut uh, and I cast Mage Armor, do I still have enough points? Uh, do I still can I still move uh, a little bit further away from the cloud? Uh, what's your movement? I think you probably can. Yeah, so I, I would like—I I wanted to run over to where Richard is. Yeah. So is your movement thirty? Yeah, it looks like it's thirty. So you yeah. were—you were in the middle of the hut. So, I mean, in the right. middle of the cabin. So. So how do I get to see how? How do I make that little vector thing to see how far it is from the center of the hut to Richard? Okay. That's 40, that's 35. How about I go over here then? I think here so you would could be go, safe. You could make it about in between Musette and Richard, yeah. Okay, is this out of the range of the um, yeah. cloud? Yeah, okay, it's, cool. the cool. cloud is really, I mean, that's that's kind of visually just to show, but yeah. it's really mainly in, inside of the... I didn't the, want to run out and just stand uh, there in the middle of the cloud, thanks. Yeah. Sorry, Lori. So now it is its turn. And for everybody outside, you see the hut turning into a gigantic uh, monster. Come on! <laughs> I'm gonna be a chicken nugget! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. House is a monster? Yep. Oh, God. Oh, wow. It's a monster house! I love it. Yeah. Ooh, I love that movie. That's Ralph great. lets yeah. his tentacle whip slowly uh, start to retract from his arm. Holy crap! 
<laughs> I hate you and Rob right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. This thing has more tentacles than my one tentacle. Yeah. <laughs> Lovecraft sounds. I'm screwed. Ah. Right. Uh, good grief. Yeah, so it is going to make a bite attack at Musette. Oh, because you're the closest. I didn't know it was going to turn into a monster. Uh, so that's a 27 to hit. Ow. Yeah, that hits for sure. 20 damage. Ooh. Ow. Sorry. Yeah. 20. And uh, make a uh, grapple check, which is based. You can either you can pick either a dexterity saving throw or strength saving throw. Okay. Well, but either one is minus three. So I just do whichever that. one is highest. Okay, with the minus three. Yeah. So basically, oh, it's trying to it's trying to swallow you, and okay. it's, and uh, you're trying to either dodge out of the way or use your strength to stop it. Uh, yeah, I did dexterity, um, okay. and, but I still got um, what was it? Twelve nine. I got nine. So yeah. Nine. Okay. That's so great. Uh, yep. Yeah, you it it swallowed you. So you're in there with uh, with me, Anastasia. So okay. is this this mist is supposed to be like this creature's bad breath or something? Probably parts. Had yeah. half a brain. He yeah. tell you to attack from the inside. It uh, so reaches two inside. tentacles out. The whole thing is gonna move forward. It moves. Yeah. It's a house. It's or eating it? people. What's your point? Yeah. <laughs> right. Good point. Yep. Yep. And it's going to swing a tentacle at at uh, Chirubir. It got a natural one. So it didn't the, hit me? The critical failure chart. No, it did not. Okay. And I'm going to be like, whoa, that thing was really close. Didn't we, <laughs> didn't we stay here before? I, it was biding its time, I guess. Is this like that chest that opens up and tries to eat you? Is this a mimic? What is that from? Is that from Mario? Literally everything. RPG? <laughs> The, uh, the Dragon and Quest, Dragons? Dragon Warrior, uh, Mimic, Dra Dungeons and Dragons. Never seen a Mimic this big before. So, so I, 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 I'm going to change that to say that everybody has advantage to hit it on their next turn. Sweet. Uh, that's from the critical fail chart because I, I don't want to force you guys to attack it. That's it, that seems like it's meant for NPC monsters and stuff. Yeah, it does. So the other one is going to be against Richard, twenty-one to hit. Okay. Yeah. Ten, you take 10 bludgeoning damage from getting smacked with the uh, pseudopod on the end of its tentacle. That's the end of its turn. And Starting Ralph is up loser. next. Okay, can I have the tray? Oh, yeah. And then Richard will be right after Ralph. Okay. So this creature is up in front of you. It's swallowed up, um, presumably Anastasia, because you she never made it out. And it's uh, just swallowed Musette. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do uh, all my Eldritch Blast beams at this guy. So the first one you did was 11, so 18. 18. And then the next one you did was... 3. Okay, so... Uh, 9. Eight. And the last one I did was, uh, was 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So the first one hits, but the other two don't. And the other two don't? Yeah. Okay. It swings a tentacle and kind of just bats it away. So it's 9, 10, 11, 12 damage. Okay. Then I'm just going to go ahead and do a Hungry Jaws at it. Okay. I'm going to run up to this bastard and take a bite out of it. Okay. Ah! okay. Like, uh, like McGruff the crime dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, until you finish a shorter long rest, I'm going to go ahead and hit that button because I'm using my Hungry Jaws. And... Roll to hit. Plus five, so that's seven. Okay, yeah, that misses. Damn it. Richard is up next. Damn it. All right, well, I should have used my true side glasses and seen this before this even happened. Um, but hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Especially I'm if you're gonna... wearing special glasses. Yeah, oh my God. Should have used them. So stupid. All right, yeah, I'm just going to break out my uh, pistol and just start shooting at it while okay. 
I'm gonna shoot up. Um, I'm gonna okay. shoot it. You, you should have up. two attacks with your pistol, so roll to hit twice. Hit DC. All right, here we go. Hit. Twenty-six. Wow. Okay, that hits. I'm gonna Is just that roll a critical for. Hit? I mean, what was the base die roll for that? It's not plus six, is it? It's an 18 plus it's eight. Oh, okay. All right, got it. What's the next one? Uh, the next one, I can't even see it. It's an 11. Okay, that misses. So yeah, roll your damage right. on the first one. Copy that. Eight damage on the first one. Okay. And I just shoot those right in like the mouth of the house. All right. Which might be bad because we got people in there. Mm. <laughs> okay. I yeah. I, I would say that you know if you got a critical failure, you might hit somebody inside, but the chances are cool. pretty slim. Well, I'm gonna move back here. Okay. And M Musette is gonna be next. I kind of yell over at the Devere's. I'm like, brothers, De brothers Devere, get some space away from it. That thing moves. Back up. And that's the oh turn. yeah you got out you just walked out of its range didn't you so it gets an attack of opportunity 13 to hit hey wasn't i supposed to attack with the uh, advantage on those yes you were so can i reroll my second shot that missed and, and actually ralph spite attack was also with advantage so ralph you can roll one more time to see if you bit it do I roll the the ten? And, oh shoot! And your eldritch blasts. You can roll two more, two time more times for your eldritch blasts. See if you hit. Okay. Well then, uh, Richard, go first then. Okay, my okay. second shot with advantage. Then, since my first one automatically hit, um, yeah. was a twenty-three. It was a fifteen plus eight. Okay, that hits. So go ahead and roll that damage. Five damage. Okay. And then I moved out way. to get that opportunity attack against me. Yeah, and he missed. Okay. And then if, uh, Ralph, if you want to go ahead and uh, yeah. opportunity. For the Eldritch so, Blast or the Bite? Yeah, I would do the, we'll do them in order. So you did the Eldritch Blasts first. So let's uh, do Okay, those. so I rolled a 20 for that one. That hits. And okay. 1d10 plus 3, you said. All right. And then 1d10 plus 3. Shit. <laughs> 5. Okay. Plus 3. Eight. No, no, it's it's 2 plus 3. Oh. Okay. All <laughs> and right, then my and bite what, was what, a 6. What, well, you had two two Eldritch Blasts that you missed, right? Because you launched all three. Yeah. So you get yeah, one yeah, more yeah. Eldritch Blast before the bite. Okay, and the next one is... Uh, 12 plus... That's 7, Nine. 8, 19... And then I'll just blast 1d10. Okay. And that was a 4 plus 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Yeah, uh, 7 to hit. Oh, 7 to damage, right? Because you already hit it. Yeah. Yeah. And then my. And then you said my biter were not doing that. Yeah. You, yeah. You And you can uh, roll one more time for your bite because you're supposed to have rolled with advantage. Okay, so that's the bite I rolled a 15. That hits. Just okay. Barely. And then that's, uh, I rolled a two plus one, so that's three. Okay. Three okay. damage. All right, now we're on to Ms. Musette. Okay, Musette, you are uh, restrained and blind because the, you know, now the stomach is kind of pushed up against you now that the dome is gone. When you you can do stuff, you, but it's all with disadvantage. Well, what I was I was just gonna do an acid splash, but it just it says one or two creatures you can see within range. If I'm blind, I yeah, guess I technically it's, can't. It's that. dark in there now. Yeah. Well, shoot. Okay, am I? I guess like pinned against the wall. You're, you're kind of um, stuck in its stomach. You're more in the front by the mouth, I guess, but it's kind of like pulling you in with its tongue. Ew. Okay. Sorry, I guess what I'm trying to ask is um, if I want to do a touched cantrip, that's an A-OK -okay thing, even though I'm restrained? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but the, but if it if it uses an attack roll, the attack roll's at disadvantage. Uh, it does not. It you're is kind of squished. Cantrip. Okay. 
Okay, um, so I'm just going to touch whatever it is that I can touch, I guess. Um, it's an evocation cantrip uh, for light. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're you're no longer blinded. Okay. You can you can see in there, and it's kind of a, a, a whole bunch of pink and purple, with acid dripping off of it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hold on. It says at the bottom, if you target an object held or worn by a hostile creature, that creature must succeed on a dexterity saving throw to avoid the spell. It's pulling you in with a uh, pseudopod and and. Uh, okay. So yeah. are my hands I, are my hands down by my pants? Let's say. Let's just do. That they're my pants. Yeah. Maybe that's the easiest. Okay. okay? Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's my pants yeah, that fine. are now full of light. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Your your <laughs> pants are, are bright now. <laughs> hey, okay. I mean, any source of light, right? So. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't have to do anything else for that since it's touch and it's a cantrip. But right. now I can see, you said? Yes, you can see. I'm going to just do um, Bardic Inspiration for Anastasia, since she's with me inside. Okay, and uh, make a saving throw against Acid. 25 minus 3 is 22. Okay, yeah, you um, you passed. Um, so you're, you, we'll say that you avoided the Acid this time. And next up is Drovo. He is hurt really badly. But he's gonna run up and start punching. He's gonna use his silken sword. 22 to hit, so that hits. 11 damage from that one. And he's gonna attack again. Oh, natural one. He drops his silken sword on the ground. And he's going to leave it there for right now, and he's going to do a flurry of blows and attack two more times with kicks. Wow, I rolled both 17s plus uh, uh, 8 minus 3, so plus 5. 23 on both of those. 9. Uh, 20 damage from kicks. And that's the end of Drovo's turn. And now is Zoe's turn. I mean, Anastasia's turn. Okay. Um, I'm sitting here looking at this uh, one action of divine intervention. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, am I even awake yet? Do I have to do a... Oh, yeah. Session? No, the, the acid totally woke you up. Okay, good. All right. But so it, would, it would take half your movement to stand up uh, because you're still lying down because you were asleep. Okay. All right, uh, I want to do divine intervention. Okay. And I have to roll percentile dice. On the percentile dice, right? They go all the way up to 100. You have to get a, anywhere between a 1 and a 10 on your roll for this to work. Because you have to roll up to your level. Thing is, I, I know what I want to ask for, but dang it. I can see, uh, use that, correct? Yeah. Yeah, she's okay, pretty I'm, close to you. All right, About I'm just, probably five feet, five feet or ten feet away, I think. Uh, okay, and she's obviously hurting because I I think took probably yeah. half of her hit points. So I'm gonna do first level healing word. Okay. Okay, uh, healing word. I got two plus seven is nine. Okay, so Musette gets nine hit points back. Thank you. This image of the house isn't 100 percent accurate. It doesn't have like a parapet or a chimney that's on fire. That was just, you know, the closest thing we could find in the game tokens. It looks like a regular cabin. Okay, but so... But it's a monster. Let yeah. me try running. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the easiest way is the best. Make an athletics check because you're kind of... You're being squeezed, and so you're trying to... Or, or actually it is... 17! Woo! Okay. I got a 17! Okay, it got a 20. Ah! So it, it holds on to you. You're, you tried to run, but you can't. Dang it. It is Chertovir. All right. And you're outside of the monster. Right. Uh, let me see. Can I just move to where Richard is before I do anything? Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead, get out of this monster's uh, range. I'm going to go that over here. 20, 20 feet. Yeah. If you went yeah. all the way up to. Yeah. But that's less. Yeah. I am going to cast at this guy uh, Magic Missile. 
And okay. that's going to be cast. Oh, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I think I'm going to use the Numa bullet. Okay. Uh, like a fifth level. Oh, wow. Uh, fifth level spell. 5d10. Okay. Yeah. And that's a 14 plus 721 minus 3. That's uh, nine, uh, 18. 5. So, so that was 22 total? plus 5, 27, I believe. Okay. I concur. And All then, right, 27. Uh, but that was 1d10 plus 3, right? So no, that's plus, uh, plus 3 is 30. Okay, that's 30 points. All right. Yep, you heard it pretty badly. Oh, thank God. Okay, and is that the end of your turn? Yes, and I say, you put that in your pipe and smoke it. The uh, creature is going to do a bite attack against Drobo. Misses. And it's going to do a pseudopod attack against Ralph. Swings its tentacle at him. Uh, 20 to hit. Oh, wait, it has to roll with disadvantage if your cloak is on, right? Yeah, you're right. 17 to hit. 17 to hit? Uh... Yeah, that hits me. I'm, okay. My armor class is 15. Uh, I would like to do a reaction. Uh, Cast reaction. Hellish rebuke. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll roll our damage together then. And I am casting at a level five. You take 13 damage from the from it hitting you. Okay. Well, he just got a seven, so I think he failed. I don't know what the saving throw is, but 15. 15. Yeah, he failed. So he takes full damage. It. So 6d10, 47. Um, yep, and that's the end of its turn. You did more damage than anybody else, and it wasn't even your turn. Okay. Yeah, baby. All right, and now it's actually Ralph's turn. Ah, okay. Uh, who goes after me? Uh, Richard will go next. I'm going to do the arms of Hadar. Okay. And that goes like in a 10 foot radius around you, doesn't it? Yeah, so the only thing getting injured around me, like Drovo is out of the. out of. Yeah, the... ju just barely, but yeah, he's out of range. Yeah. Oh, he passed. So he takes half damage. Half he damage? Got a, he got a 20, yeah. Okay. 66. 29. So that's 29, but you okay. succeeded. Yeah, so it'd be half. So we'll do fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, so fourteen damage. Okay, it's hurting pretty badly, and it's Richard's turn. I'm pretty good where I'm at, so I'm just gonna start shooting the the tentacles on the house. Okay. So it seems like where you're at would be looking at it. The, it seems like you, you would have to climb up on the roof of the car to be able to shoot it, right? Do you want me to? Well, I, I'm just, where you're at, I'm just trying to imagine how you could how you could shoot at it with the car in between you. I mean, if you you could walk around to the backside there. Alright. Boom. So I moved. Because yeah. it's a minivan, so I'm imagining it's probably like... Tall. Yeah. Okay. Uh, makes sense to me and then yeah i'm gonna um shoot i don't have advantage anymore do i no 21 for the first shot that hits 25 for the second shot that also hits four for the first one okay five for the second one this okay. is a weak pistol <laughs> you um, also have you could do action surge if you want yeah so i was gonna do attacks. i want to action surge okay. and Go at it again. Okay. 19. That hits. 19. Also hits. 9 damage for the first. Okay, that was better. 8 damage for the second. Wow. It is reeling. It's really close to dead. Well, then I want to use the rest of my action or my movement and move back behind you. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And I'm and good. And now it is Musette's turn. Uh, you're restrained, uh, not blinded, and um, 
your inside of the creature's mouth. And it seems like it's kind of sagging a little bit, like it's uh, it's getting exhausted and okay. hurt really bad. Um, I'm gonna just cast Thunder Wave from second level. Okay. The Wave of Thunder's Force sweeps out from you. Um, and I don't have to protect anyone because it's just me by myself in there. Well, uh, uh yeah, Anastasia, Anastasia is, in is, is in there with you. I thought she left. I tried, but I couldn't get out. Fuck. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> You're gonna have to edit that, I guess. <laughs> Gosh darn. I thought she freaking left. <laughs> well, that's dumb. <laughs> How much damage does it do? I want, she lower. She might survive. Uh, it well at what I was gonna cast it at was three d eight damage. Yeah. I'd rather not, you know. That's a max of twenty four. What is her hit points right now? Uh oh. oh uh, where am I? I'm at thirty four. Oh okay. Yeah. So yeah. she wouldn't. She wouldn't die. But the I know. Might. I mean, I can. That was that second level. I can still catch it at first level and hope that it, you know, doesn't yeah. kill her. But um, yeah, uh, it's hurt really badly. Um, it's kind of wheezing. What you can see from the inside is it's wheezing and thinking that it bit off more than it could chew. Okay. So um, I'm just going to do. Um, I'm just gonna cast Cloud of Daggers okay. far away from Anastasia and me. You yeah, and right it's only in a five foot square, so it's just a right. little, a little. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. So just like up on its on the monster house's side. Yeah. So you're gonna um, cut a cut an open cut open a hole in its side. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that automatically hits, so you just have to roll damage. Okay, so it's 44 slashing damage. 13. Uh, it is dead. And, Yay! Um, and it's kind of like if you're standing inside of a tent and somebody pulls all of the all of the support out of it, it just kind of deflates and falls on top of you. Yeah. Gross. Um, so, yeah, you you might want to get out of there. Somebody get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. So I crawl out from underneath it. Okay. I've been slimed. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, you haven't really gotten your full rest yet. You could still do that if you want to sleep outside under the stars like Ralph was trying to do or in the car. You probably don't want to sleep in the house anymore. Or if, if Sherdovir could do the hut again. Sure. Uh, wait, where are we going to sleep now? Outside of that thing, right? Yeah, I, I'm. Well, it's your choice, but that's what I'm assuming. I'm sleeping in the van. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna sleep next to the van outside of it, though. Okay. I'll, ma I'll make a tiny hut. Uh, I'll make a tiny hut uh, here. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna go back to my spot. I'll make a tiny hut. Oh, I was trying to mark it on the actual uh, zoom window. I'll make a tiny hut up here on this ridge. Okay. There. I'm gonna go over there. All right. Wow, all right, right, we did it. Much Yay. damage at all that round. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, guys. Well, Drovo and Drovo was really close to dead. Uh. I can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you go to sleep, everybody just gets healed automatically too. Okay, so I... we're gonna go ahead and heal ourselves now. Um. Or well, are you rest? are you going to sleep? Are we taking a long rest or short rest? Well, when you go to sleep, it'll be a long rest, but you're not quite there yet. We're, we're oh, just... well, then why are we talking sleep? So, um, yeah, so I guess, you know, we're just patching ourselves up and stuff. And Yeah, so what we heard so far is that Chertovir is setting up the hut, but some people yeah. want to sleep in the car and some people want to sleep outside. Okay. So I want to learn all of that, what, what everybody's doing first before you hit the long rest button. Oh, I was going to go back to my spot, not be in this bubble with Chertovir. Okay. 
I'm hanging out with my brother inside the bubble, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to yeah, run up to the definitely bubble. Go in there. I didn't know we could make another bubble, so I'm going to go go sleep in the bubble this time. Okay. I'm gonna go back to my spot. All right. I guess I will go in the bubble, too. There we go. It's okay. okay. About Ralph is awake. And Anastasia's going to sleep by that cactus. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm going to sleep in the car. Okay. Because I slept in the bubble last time, and look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that cabin was going to be a good uh, structure for us to rest inside of, but... Uh, I keep forgetting that the Imagica is a strange and wonderful place full of giant creatures. <laughs> yeah. Since it's like a loose fabric now, can we prop it up with some tent stakes or some poles or some sticks or something? You could. It's dripping acid. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good to eat. Yeah. I, I, I like to eat stuff with tentacles, but I'm going to pass on this one. Yeah. Tentacles? Tentacles. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to meditate and I'm going to take a long rest. Okay. Uh, Is it like gonna, one in the morning? It, it, that's about right. Yeah. It, or 1230. Okay. Midnight. So uh, if is anyone taking watch or just going to sleep? Oh, Ralph I, took watch. Okay. okay. Great. I'm going so, to sleep. Is, is Ralph staying up all night or is he going to wake somebody else up after his watch is over? I'll wake someone else up after my watch. Okay. All right. So um, everybody else is going to sleep, and Ralph, roll a perception check. Yeah. What did you uh, get? Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Okay. Um, yeah. So the night passes uh, pretty uneventfully. You're getting pretty tired. Uh, you've been up now. It's about two o'clock. Uh, two o'clock in the morning. And you're ready to go to sleep. Um, so you're going to wake somebody up. Okay. Uh, all right. Richard, wake up. Bro, come on, man. He's in the dome. So you I'm can't really, dome. you can't get into the dome to wake him up. I ain't trying to get up right now, bro. You, he can't hear you because he's in the dome and you, you can't get in there. I'm in a deep sleep. Anastasia. Wake up! <laughs> oh, Ew, I'm still sticky. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it's your turn to watch. I sleep. Uh, okay, I'm glad I brought my thermos of coffee. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, make a perception check with uh, minus three. Perception check minus yeah. three. Give me a good one. Oh crap. Okay, well, I only got a four. Okay, you tried really hard to stay awake, but you didn't quite make it. You fell asleep. Uh, but the, the rest of the night passes uneventfully. Uh, everybody wakes up, and you can take a long rest. I'm going to go fuel up the, the van with the rest of the fuel. Okay. Good plan. This is being fun so far, but I didn't expect that house, dude. <laughs> That's what, what the hell, man? I know. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and advocate of his art, but Don's unique and inspiring paintings are for sale and over 50% of the proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine program at the Texas Children's Cancer Center. There's even a paver in Washington, D.C. representing Celebrate Imagination. We're thrilled that this worthy cause is sponsoring our podcast again this year, and we hope that you'll consider looking over the Etsy shop to buy one of his original paintings or books. Follow the link in the show notes or click the side banner and let's see what's new with Don Bertram today. On his Etsy shop, you can still find the original paintings, The Stargazer, The Folk Singer, the Pearl, Balancing Act 2, Mother and Child 2, The Portal 2, Top of the World, and don't forget about his books, The Chimney Sweep's Tale, and Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination, and The Imaginaries. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe and Ralph by Asia Yordanova. She also created The Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. 
Map of the Reconciled Dominions and Isorderex by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition, Cradle of Jersemet, provided by friend of the show, Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. Bentley Widget here, smashing through the fourth wall like the freaking Kool-Aid man to tell you about our friends at Little Spark Films. Imagine you're sitting around the table eating waffles with your friends and they're all talking about this crazy new film they saw on Amazon Prime or Tubi or Plex. So you're like, yeah, it was totally scary. But you haven't seen it. And they can see right through you because you're maybe made out of glass like the Kool-Aid man. Don't be that guy. Go see The Torturer right now. Pause this thing. Watch it and come back. Support Joe and Catalina. Oops, I mean Ralph and Musette. Also, while you're supporting them, you might want to see their Hellbound Laments, short films featuring boxes from the Pyramid Gallery and configuration boxes. You should also check out Catalina's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. The Barker Cast Interviews, Occupy Midian. Previously, this book was only available on Kickstarter pre-order. But now you can get it on Amazon.com. Over 400 pages of interviews documenting our time at the start of the podcast and the Occupy Midian movement that successfully lobbied for an extended version of Clive Barker's Nightbreed when the movie studios and distributors were against it. Chock full of interviews with cast and crew, there are some great stories. Edited and assembled by Ryan Danhauser and Giselle Tung, the people behind the long-running Clive Barker podcast. Tell the world you're a Clive Barker fan and support this monumental effort from the fan community by buying this book on Amazon Hardcover, Kindle, or Apple Books. Thanks for listening. Reading. Thanks for reading. Another great way to support the Barker cast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.tpublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. Of course, the best way to support this podcast is through our Patreon at patreon.com slash BarkerCast589. Our subscribers will get exclusive access to content not available anywhere else, like our Collector's Corner video series, Rare Barker videos, and early behind-the-scenes stuff. Plus, backers in the $10 tier will also be able to choose an episode topic, and we might mail you something once in a while, depending on your location. Our supporters also get access to the exclusive channel in our Discord server. We'll be forever grateful if you consider helping us out and subscribing to our Patreon. So what's new on Patreon? Digitized from the VHS, we've got The Art of Clive Barker from the Best Cutler Gallery. We've got a Patreon special, Patterns of a Dreaming God, a story that Jose wrote in 2008, plus my Collector's Corner Jump Tribe special video that takes a deep dive into what happened to this rare series of plushies. So when, when everybody wakes up, the people who died, the penalty is minus two instead of minus three. So we'll just keep that in mind. And um, so you wake up, people come out, you can come out of the dome and come out of the car and out from by the scorch mark, I guess. And uh, what do you want to do next? How's everybody doing so far? I'm awake. I'm hungry. Should we start a fire and make some breakfast or something? Yes. Yes. No, let's go to the next town. No, I think we should eat before we go on to the next thing. I mean, well, we, we got were literally just more. attacked by a giant monster house. Yeah, we got 12 more hours of driving. We need no, to eat something. Ralph doesn't want to have breakfast because he spent the night snacking on that thing. I know it. <laughs> you can't eat that. It's riddle in acid. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you eat worse. Maybe. Just hot sauce. <laughs> Yeah. I was told not to eat the acid or it will take me on the trip of fun. Oh, yeah. Can I just uh, add that 
I found this thing hanging from the rear view mirror of our van. <laughs> is that Alf? Alf? Yes. I'll have to ask Bentley what this is. That, that's that's Gordon Shumway. Oh, yeah. okay. It looks it's like Bentley. <clears throat> it does look like Bentley. It's baby Bentley. Okay. Ah. So who makes <laughs> breakfast? Uh, I guess I can try and make some breakfast. Uh, we got, we got uh, provisions or something, Ryan. You're asking guess... me what you brought, right? So I thought I think we brought something, right? So let's just eat whatever we brought in the van. I know that I know that tail. it has uh, gasoline. Well, I suggested that we bring some food to go, so we should have something in the van before we left. Okay. I got Taco Bell. We're not smart. There is no Taco Bell. Right, right. There's Otark Bell. All right. So There is no Taco Bell. There is no Taco Bell. There is no spoon. All right, so we've had breakfast, right? Sure. Yeah, all right. There's cacti all around. We can eat that, right? Uh, you can. I, yeah. Sure. Exactly. If it's the flat kind, yeah. It looked like mm. it in the picture. Like Prickly pear. Yeah. yeah. Is that nice. what you did? You ate cacti? Yes. Uh, also give us sure. water. Okay, and, and who uh, who prepared the cacti? Ralph Thank did. You. Okay, I want to say something to needles, though. Make a... Uh, make a survival Digestion check. check. <laughs> the yeah. survival check, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Where is the survival check? It's... They're alphabetical. Okay, let's see. And I have to s s take out two points. Uh, I oh, thought Ralph was nice. doing it. Fifteen. Okay, yeah, you were able to uh, cut up the cacti to make it edible it, without hurting yourself. I don't think I would have hurt myself. <laughs> I'm covered in scales. Mm -hmm. Or like, I don't know, lizard skin. Anyway. Yeah. So... Uh, you guys are you guys had a breakfast of cacti and they have water stored inside of them. Yes, I fuel the car, um, so I fuel the van, so we're good for another twelve hours of driving. Yeah. All right, Ralph in okay. the back seat. Who's driving? Uh, who drove here? It was uh, Richard, right? Richard, right? Yeah, I, I drove here. I keep driving. Okay. okay. All right. But I. Do you want to collect some of them cactus needles? Mm. Okay. okay. And I put those in one of my cargo pockets that you see right here. All right. So um, you guys get in the car, uh, start heading out. Uh, anything that you guys want to plan or talk about on the way there? Well, um, I can tell Drovo, hey, Drovo. So I'm not sure what the situation is going to be uh, when we get to Durther City. Uh, Last time we were there, it was pretty empty, but let's see what we find. In the meantime, just, you know, uh, be on your guard. Yeah, that that's, uh, that seems like the, the, the way to be. We're trying to recover Cassius's body. That's right. I hope it's still there when we get there. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to look like. Um, I have a feeling it's not going to be there. Right. And, um... If I can just take a quick moment outside, I'm not sure. Did I have a? I forgot about. Did I have a meeting with the Gulfs about this? Do I have a way of uh, giving this body to the Gulfs? Because uh, last time I had a, a a spell that would allow me to open a portal, right? Yeah, they didn't give you anything like that this time. Oh, and so the only meeting that, that you had with them was when you were dead. Right. So. Yeah. Can I contact that giant one-armed demon by my, you know, mind? You can give it a try. Okay. Well, let me just let me just uh cross my legs on the on the uh in the back of the van and I'm going to focus and I'm going to see if I can uh cuz I'm concerned about how am I going to give the body of Cassius back to the gulfs. So I'm going to see if I can contact that uh, the giant one-armed creature. What was his name again? Gaustus. Gaustus. Yeah. Right, he has so... two arms now. One of them is mechanical. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
All right, so I'm gonna try to focus my little uh, antennae, and uh, okay. like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm gonna see if I can focus on Gaustus. Yeah, make an intelligence check. Minus two. Intelligence check. Thought it was minus two total. Oh my goodness, I've got two. Yeah, you're you're not able to reach him. Ugh. Okay. Well, I guess. Being a good stressed out librarian, I'm just gonna shut up and continue mulling that over until we get there. Okay. All right. Any anything else anybody else wants to do or try or or and and uh, also for I I I should mention also that um, Anastasia's wings are a little bigger. Hey, you know. I hit puberty overnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to bring those everywhere you go. <laughs> Gosh. Awesome, awesome. Anything else before we before we get there? Well, you navigate your way to the outside of the gates of uh, Darthur City. Anybody that wants to look around the gates, I guess, make a perception check. Yeah, I, I want to look around the gates. Um, let okay. me see. Perception check. Oh, minus With two. a minus two. So it looks like I got a 13. I, did, I rolled a 20, so a minus two would be 18 for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah I got so 15 we're, minus we're, two, 13. 13, you don't see anything, but, but, uh, but Anastasia, you Shh. do notice that there are some tracks leading in into the town, uh, footprints. What kind of footprints? Uh, they, they, do they look, look like, like, like people footprints or yeah, animal they, footprints. I mean, they look like or... shoes. Okay. Yeah. Well. Looks like uh, some of the people might have come back. Huh. And I, did you say that aloud? Yes, I just said that aloud. Look, there's okay. footprints on the ground, and there's shoe, <laughs> fo shoe footprints. I didn't even see those. It's not a mm -hmm. uh, not a lot though, just a few. Okay. It only Good takes catch. a few. <laughs> it, it's hard to tell how many because they kind of you know overlap each other. Because they walk in single file. To hide their numbers. <laughs> to hide their numbers. <laughs> Sand people. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. No. Those were the other one. Those were the jobbers. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, okay. So I guess we're we're gonna have to proceed with care, huh? We always should. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you want to do? Uh, we want to get in the city and go in and approach the city quietly through the gates and uh, okay. and and take a look around our surroundings. All right, everybody, make a stealth check if you're trying to be quiet. I mean, so far, just Cheerdewear said he wanted to do that, but yeah, I want to be stealthy and use my true scene glasses to see if there's any sort of booby traps that I can see that are potentially invisible. And, and or something. the people who died have to put a minus two on that. Okay, okay so well, with mine I got a nine then. Okay. With mine I got a ten. Ooh, yeah. I got a nineteen for stealth. Nice. Twenty-one okay. for Ralph. I'm a six What's foot that? tall blue guy. It's hard. <laughs> what, Ralph what did Ralph get? 21. Uh, 19 minus two. I got 17. Okay. And 17 for Drovo. I'm so sorry. My wings must have banged up against something, so I'm not too <laughs> yeah. stealthy today. We Scooby Doo <laughs> stealth across the street, and Anastasia messes it up. Sorry. <laughs> We can put the map up, but as you walk into the city, you see uh, four Nullianax all kind of looking towards you. And they're all standing together. And another creature uh, in behind them. And it's crouched down, and it looks like it's doing some kind of a ritual. Um, have they noticed us yet? Oh, yeah, they noticed you. Oh, right here. 112, is that what it says? Yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. They're both the bodies are still there. I am going to cast mage armor. How many of them are there? One, two, three, four, four and one big mofo behind him. Well, before you cast mage armor, armor. I mean, they saw you coming, so everybody has to roll initiative first. Roll initiative. Okay. Right. Yeah. Sir, so roll initiative. Ah, oh, dang. Thirteen. And we're doing minus two on that one too? Yeah, or? minus two for the people who died, yeah. Okay, I got seven. 
I've I got, got a, 15. I've got, okay, so seven I've got a rock. From seven from you, Zet. I've got three minus two, one. I got a rock. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I, so 15 I'm in, for Drovo. I'm in my clumsy era. Oh, God, it's catching. Uh, <laughs> and what did Ralph I get? Know. Ralph got a 10. You did you ten. plus for initiative? Yeah. And uh, what did we uh, uh, get? I accidentally put 55 in there somehow. Uh, no, I got seven. Okay. Okay, so at the top of the round, you see the... Uh, the four Nellian uh start, they, they, uh, they grab each other's hands and, uh, and then sort of a, a wave of electricity goes across all four of them. Oh, well, I guess, first of all, place yourselves where you are when you came in. I don't know if Churdo I'm here is kind right of there. stuck out in the front there. I don't know if that's where he would have been. Yeah, I got in and I stopped when I saw oh, those okay. four guys. Okay. I didn't know if like this a was wall? just the way they were I'm, when I'm... we started. Is it like a wall or just a roiling wave of energy? It's a wave of energy going across them. It's just like a big surge. Okay. Yep, no inax. They like yeah. to play with those sparks. So they <clears throat> launch a, a, a massive electrical discharge at all of you guys, or as many as they can fit. It's a it's a fifteen foot radius centered around um musette because musette's kind of right in the middle so it looks like that is gonna Ouch. leave out a mark <laughs> it's gonna leave a mark <laughs> it's gonna well maybe move it down a little bit so we can get richard in there too oh I'm no and then that would leave oh, out chertovir you don't have to include me <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool. Okay, yeah, I guess that's how it is. I guess Richard is the only one that's not in it, so everybody else has to make a uh, dexterity saving throw. Okay. Dexterity? Am I caught by it? Yes, I am. 24. Do I 21 ask? minus 2 is 19. 19? Okay, yeah. you passed. I got a 22 total. That also passes. Ralph got a 20. That passed. Okay, I've got a 9. Going? Ralph wants yeah, to do a reaction. Pass. No, everybody but me. I got you. Oh, by the way, did I have a chance to put up mage armor or just rolled for initiative and I didn't get that chance? You didn't get a chance. Gotcha. No, I mean, mage armor lasts for eight hours. If you want to do that, you should do it like while you're driving in the car or something. Yeah, that's true. How far away are these guys? Five, 10, 15, 20 yeah. feet. Yeah, about 20 feet. Okay, uh, Ralph uh, is going to react to their attack. I'm going to uh, Misty escape and stay invisible. Hold on. Just wait, let's do the damage first. What's this guy that says 112? You don't remember the 112? The oh, big yeah. 70, who, whoever right. failed, you take 76 damage. Right. What? And if you passed, uh, you take half of that. What is that? I, uh, 38? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Se 76 damage? Uh huh. I've got 73 hit points. Okay, you're unconscious. Uh, okay. I'm unconscious. Do, do you hate us, Ryan? Do, do, oh, what? You guys oh. blundered into this. <laughs> I guess. I wander into everything. <laughs> <laughs> We're a bunch of murder hobos. <laughs> well, you have to be successful to be a murder hobo. <laughs> I'm a murder hobo. Ouch. I was tried for it, put to death, and escaped it. I mean, there's a reason why my brother was tapped to join Jericho, not me. Oh, yeah, he got hit. Okay. So I got to roll his... Uh... Saving throw. Was that a combined blast by all of them or just one of them? Yeah, it's like they held hands and then that big wave uh, forced oh yeah, through yeah. all of them and just uh, hit us. He, he got a 12, so Drovo, I think, is probably down. Yeah, he only has 45 hit points. Okay, so you're you're uh, you're asleep, right, Chertavir? 
or not I'm unconscious, or... yeah. He's unconscious, okay. yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. So it's, it's uh, Zoe's turn next. I would like to use Channel Divinity Preserve Life as an action to restore 50 hit points to Chertivir. Oh, wow. Uh, do you have to do you have to be in touching range to do that? Uh, any creature within thirty feet of you. Oh wow! Okay. okay. Can you divide it up amongst other multiple? Or I can. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Did you say the Drobo's also knocked out? Or yeah. Mm-hmm. You wanna? You want me to give you? Let's see. You wanna do thirty-five and fifteen? Thirty-five for Chertivir and fifteen for Drobo. Am I the only? Am I the only one unconscious? No, Drovo's oh. unconscious too. Okay, so me and Drovo. Okay, cool. Okay, so thirty-five for you, fifteen for him. Thank you. You're an angel. That I am. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I don't know if I can give him thirty-five. What? What is your? What is your? Uh, your maximum hit points, Chertivir? My maximum hit points is seventy-three. Yeah. Okay, that should be fine because you yeah. can restore no more than half of its hit point maximum. Everybody, that I heal. Okay. Yeah, so you'd be able to give me like maybe 38 or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so 35, 15, 35, 35. And I also would like to do a bonus action. Cool. Okay. Uh, I have spiritual weapon. Okay. As a bonus action. Yeah. Um, and where are you going to put that? Okay. Uh, well, it, it makes a melee spell attack against a creature within five feet of the weapon. So. I would like to. That thing that's in front of them, can it, could it go through that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can see through it. Okay, so how about I put it right next to the big guy, because I'm sure he's going to okay. be trouble. Okay. Um, yeah, All right. roll to hit. He's still yep. trying to cast it. Wow. Uh, that that hits, I believe. Okay. Let me double check. But... So even with the minus two, it'd be 20. Yeah, that hits. Okay, and for damage, I got a 10. 10 damage. Yeah, so half the damage would be 5, so he has to get a 10 uh, concentration saving throw. Because he's casting a spell, and he's still working on it. He's been trying to ignore you guys. Okay, he got a 22. So he, he was able to continue concentrating. <sighs> and Drovo is up next. He's going to use half of his movement to stand up because he was unconscious. And he's going to run over. He can go 45 feet. Let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He's going to go right here and attack this Nullianac right here. So that's uh, plus 7 with the Silken Sword. That's um, 20-something, so that hits. 10 damage to that one. And he's going to attack him again. That misses. And then he's going to do Flurry of Blows for two more unarmed strikes. And that's the end of his turn. We'll do Concentration Check on the uh, on the, bar- the, ele- the uh, barrier that they put up. Nine. He he failed. So they dropped they 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 dropped their electrical force barrier that they have. Yes. After Drovo, it's Richard's turn. All right. Well, then I am going to move my character um, thirty feet over five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, and I am going to shoot. Uh, the big guy. Well, I was going back 25 feet, sorry. I'm going to shoot the big guy. Okay. Roll to hit. Oh, nine. Uh, nine misses. Twelve. Twelve also misses. Blah. So as, as you get a closer look at this guy, he looks like a Nolianek, except he's taller and thinner and a little more skeletal looking. And also the fingers that make up the head are bat wing fingers so like they're huge wings that come out of its head uh and it looks like it could probably fly fly with his head wow that's uh that's pretty wild i don't think i've ever seen that before pretty cool yeah there's what it looks like Mm -hmm. 
That's cool. Oh, that's okay. cool. Who who made that? Uh, I commissioned it. Oh, it's great. Catherine Burke is her name. Wow. Um, Good job. On Reddit, her name is an actual skeleton. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, y y and you missed those two shots, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you gonna do anything else? Um, I wanna yell ah! in frustration, okay. and then that's the okay. end of my turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, Zoe is up next. Or no, wait. I'm sorry. Ralph is up next. Did I get to do my reaction? Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I forgot your reaction to getting hit. Yeah, we yeah. Want, I wanted to make sure that you weren't unconscious first before we did that. Yeah, okay. well, my, my reaction, where'd it go? Uh, my reaction was uh, the Misty Step, uh, Misty Escape. Oh, man. oh, yeah, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, where I was going to zonk myself right here. Does that stop you from getting hurt? No, okay. I still got hurt. Okay. Just my gotcha. reaction. Yep. So yeah, you're over there. Yeah. He's invisible until the start of his next turn or he attacks. Okay. It is the start of his next turn. Okay. So now it is the start of my next turn. Oh. Uh, Arms of Hadar. Uh, oh. Okay. With all these guys that are ten feet within within yeah. my within me my uh, vicinity. Okay. Uh, each creature of that area must make a strength saving throw and a fail. Um, so they need to make a strength saving throw. Um, on a failed save, a target takes 2d6 necrotic damage and can't take reactions until its next turn. On a successful save, the creature takes half damage but suffers no other effect. Strength 15. So for A, he got a 10, so he failed. B, 14, he failed. C, uh, 16, he passed. And D, 13 fail. I think they all failed except for C. Yeah, that's what yeah. you said. What about yeah. these other two? What about the uh, guy? Oh. The yeah. Uh, the uh, angelic looking one failed. And then 112? 112 is a corpse. Oh, he's a corpse? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, Sorry. it's kneeling over 112 and casting some kind of a ritual that seems to be taking more than one turn. Okay, so that was... Arms of Hadar. Yeah. Hit that button. Spell attack plus seven. Okay. Roll to hit, right? Do I have to roll to hit each one? No, the 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 saving throw was the oh. roll. Sorry, uh one D yeah. six. This one. But actually I think would D even be in the range of that? Who? Nullianac D. Oh. Didn't you say it had to be within 10 feet? Yeah. So it looks like A, That'd B, be and too the far. big guy. Yeah, yeah A, B, so and the I big don't guy. Think, yeah, D didn't get hit. Uh, but Androvo wouldn't get hit either. 17 plus 7 is 24. 24. That's Ralph's turn. And uh, Musette is next. Yeah, I didn't get knocked out. Okay. Yeah. Um. Sorry, that took that took so that long. I like forgot what I was turn. doing. Okay, I'm gonna move over here behind this little uh, this little building. Oh, I can't see very well. Am I backwards? Yeah, it looks like you're backwards. Okay, I need to turn myself around. Or if Rob, if you want to turn myself around, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We'll put I your left foot in angle. and then take your left foot out. Yeah. yeah. Put your left foot in again. Check no, it it's just whenever I try to get closer, um, my computer messes it up. We all know my computer's a jerk. Okay, so, um, shoot, I still need to be able to look closer anyway. Okay, so I want to attack um, the biggin. Or what I want to do is... Uh, okay, cool, yeah, my range is 60 feet. Thanks, Rob. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do Cloud of Daggers. And you know what? Let's put it... Right on top of the big guy. Okay. Um, and I'm going to cast it from... Um, where am I? Yeah, from fourth level. So it's an 8d4. Oh, you... you and the... the uh, Ralph's arms of Hadar interrupted his spell, too. 
Oh shoot, but okay, hold on. Does that mean that my uh my uh, cloud of daggers is gonna hurt Ralph? No, it's only Arms five of foot. Isn't attached it's it's to just him. a five foot area. Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, we're gonna eight D four Where's my four? And I think the arms of Hadar don't stay, right? They're just for the one turn and then they're gone. So I'm gonna put my um, cube five feet on each side on top of the big guy, and I'm gonna cast it from the fourth level, which means it's gonna be 8d4. Okay, I'm hitting cast. Okay, 8d4. Joe, can you help me? This is gonna be eight times. 22. Okay. Yep, that hurts him. It screeches. I can't see anyone else that I can help. I'm good. Okay. Thank you. All right, Chertovir is next. Okay, uh, let me move closer to the fray. Wait, is that a good strategy? Let me strategize, sorry. Um, okay, so... Those Nullianax, they're they're standing around protecting that other big monster? They were trying, yeah. Okay. I think I will shoot some magic missiles at them. Uh, okay. One thing is, is it possible to shoot magic missiles? Do I have to shoot them just at one target, or can I no, split you can, them? No, you can split them up however you want, and they automatically oh. hit. That's even better. Let's Let's see if I can cast that at what level. Let's see. Let's do magic m missile at fourth level. I guess I'll add the first three to one of the monsters, and then the other one, okay. each of the other monsters get one hit. So okay. I'm going to roll for, um, yeah, uh, roll for damage. Which one four. are you hitting with the three? Uh, the one at the top. Okay. A. Yep. Uh, so okay. I've I've uh, my first miss my first uh, damage says four plus one equals five so I hit him with three right so that means my first missile hit him with five okay. then the second missile hit him with five that's ten the third missile hit him with three points that's thirteen okay okay and now I'm gonna launch another one for B okay. I hit him with four points of damage. I'm going to hit C with another magic missile. That is four points of damage. And I'm going to hit D with two points of damage. Okay. Diminishing returns and all that. That's I it. I believe. That is it. Okay. All right. We're at the top of the next round. So, yeah, it's the uh, the four Nellian acts. It's their turns. And they're trying to decide whether they want to keep trying to protect this creature. But his spell got interrupted. Or if they want to just break off and start fighting. Hey, I forgot one thing. Is it possible for me to walk out of the wall with the bonus action? With the bonus movement? It's I don't not, know that I can You do. have movement. It's not bonus movement. Right, right, it's not bonus. But once I throw the missiles, can I still move like 15 feet backwards? Uh, yeah, you, well, you used half your movement to get up. Ah, that's right, so because that would fell be down. 15 feet. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. I guess I could try just running out here. Okay. So I'm, that way I'm not in the line of sight of Nullionex, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, my plan is to snipe them through the gate, you know? Okay. okay. Gotcha. All right. So this one, uh, A, is going to turn to Ralph and attack him. Ooh. You know what I'm going to do? So You're going to el Eldritch two, Blast. Uh, two long knives, and it's, and it's going to attack it. So that's a 21 to hit. 21 to hit? Yeah. So I think that hits you. Yeah, it hits me. 20 to hit actually and 1d6 plus 4 so 10 uh, 10 damage from the knife well then I guess the only other option is a hellish rebuke okay dexterity saving throw is uh, 15 16, 16 is what it rolled oh bastard so it takes half damage 
Oh, uh, 1d10. Okay. 32. Wait, shit. Oh. 23 plus 9, 32. Sorry. That one, that one is dead. 6. Wait, he is only taking half of that. 6 is oh. 38. Half of that is 19. It is 19. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's uh, still dead. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. You yeah. Math saved us. Yeah. I'd like to thank Math for this. Don't attack me. <laughs> <laughs> this one is going to run over here and attack you. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, and he's he pulls out two knives and starts slashing at you. And that's 19 to hit. And also 19 to hit. So 1d6 plus 4 for each one. 18 damage total. Slashing damage. He snags. Slashes you in the back. So D is going to run down here and attack Richard. 14? Does, 14 doesn't hit, I don't think, right? It does not. Okay, so he missed both times. And this one is going to go over here and attack Drovo. Whoa, natural 20. Wow, 5 doubled is 10 damage. That was a very good critical hit. That's it for their turns. And now it is the Angelic Nullianak. It's going to fly over to Zoe. It's going to do two attacks with its scythe. Okay, so 11 plus 9 is 20 to hit. Yeah. And 5 plus 9 is 14. I think Oof. that misses, right? Um, yeah, my armor class is 17. Okay. Oh, and it's moving out of the range of your... I don't I don't think your, um, it I don't only think your weapon gets reactions. No. no, it doesn't. Okay. Plus 4 is 9. You take 9 slashing damage. And 6d8 necrotic damage. Save me! I'm down to 13 or as it is. I'm, I'm dead. 20, 24 damage. Oh, Lord. Oh, you're down? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's the end of its turn. And next up was Zoe's turn. So I guess make a death saving throw. Okay. Let's see if this, uh, this eyeball thing will work for me. <laughs> yeah. It's actually been rolling pretty high for me so far. I've got 14. Yeah, that's a pass. Anything Woo! 10 or above is a pass. Thank you, ugly eyeball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it is Drovo's turn. Actually, Drovo would have gotten an attack of opportunity against that thing when it left his range. So I'll do a quick attack for him. That's a 19 plus 7, so that hits with his silken sword. Uh, so 10 more damage to it. And now it's Drovo's actual turn. And he's got this Nullianak in his face. So he's going to attack it. I don't think 13 hits. Nope. Okay. And natural 1. He drops his silken sword on the ground again. And then he's going to do Flurry of Blows. That Drovo oh, is... One of those is in natural 20. That Drovo dropping his sword all the time. That's not fit for a Repimac. 22 damage to that guy. That's the end of Drovo's turn. And who's next? Richard is next. Alrighty. Well, <clears throat> the same thing as Drovo. This guy's uh, right up in my face. He just attacked at me twice. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to slash at him with Cassius Briar's old sword. Okay. Roll to hit. 15? That hit. No, just no the 15 was the damage, but 25 oh, okay. was 25. The... So we can use that 15. Okay. 15. Okay, and you got another attack? Natural 20. Oh. Okay. Uh, roll your damage and double it. Yeah, it automatically does that for me. Okay. Well, it, no, don't. Yeah, you don't want to do that because we do it differently. Well, I didn't have any other option but to click on it once it turned blue and change the modifier on it. So the damage you can was 16. Use dice. Oh, I don't have any at the moment. My cat ate them all. Cat ate them all. 
Oh, I can come over here to the side. Yeah, my cat is obsessed with these D20s and stuff. All right, so one D10 plus six. So you, yeah, you just basically you roll a you uh, you roll a ten sided die, and add six, and then you double the whole thing. The way D and D Beyond does it is it probably just doubles the dice and then adds the modifier after. But my way it does, does more damage. Fourteen times two is twenty eight. Twenty eight. That's exactly how many hit points it had. Oh wow! See that made the difference <laughs> using it did. my way. Yeah. Yeah. So that one is dead. Uh, Nully and Act D. And you have action surge if you want to keep going, or you can. Yeah, I'm gonna go up and hit that one that uh, is next to Drovo. Okay. Action surge it, roll and to hit. Uh, roll to hit him. Natural twenty, baby. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do the same thing. Roll your damage and double it. D10 plus 6 times 2. D10. Eight, 16. 16. Oh, that one had 17 hit points. Ooh. Well, so he's still, he's still up. Barely. Okay. And is that the end of your turn? Yeah, because if I move, he's going to try to attack me. So um, okay. I don't have any info to tell anybody. So, oh, I, I say, I did that with the most remorse you could ever imagine. <laughs> okay. In case anybody's watching, I did not enjoy <laughs> doing what I just did. For the record. And, and next is Ralph's turn. Well, this guy who uh, decided to stab me with his blades, uh, I'm going to give him an agonizing blast. Okay. Uh, if you're at point blank range, you have to attack at disadvantage with the, uh, with the Eldritch Blast. Well, okay. I mean, imagine if you were trying to shoot somebody with something and and they were like right in your face, messing with you. Yeah, but also this is going to push him back ten feet. Yeah. With well, that, that, that's just an effect that you have on your Eldritch Blast. It could do you could do that all the time. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh... Yeah, 1d10 plus 3. So I got to roll to hit? Yeah, with disadvantage. So you roll twice and take the lower number. Okay. Oh, dang it. That one's 19. <laughs> that one's 2. Do I do okay, that for so each missed. beam or just... Uh... Yeah, for, for each beam. Okay, so I missed my first beam. Okay. 16. I missed my second beam. And uh, so there goes my Eldridge Blast. So, do, 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 do. Which none well, of then I guess I'm just gonna hungry good. jaws his head. Okay. Bam! I, if it hits, I gain two temporary hit points. And that's not a disadvantage. And that's not a disadvantage. Okay. Uh, did I just roll to hit? Yep. 13. 13 to hit? That missed. Damn it! Somebody <laughs> kill this guy! Well, why are you standing right next to it? He came up behind me! Yeah, but you yeah. also move right into their little group. Wow. Yeah, okay. your Eldritch Blast has a 180 foot range. Well, he did that so that he could use the arms of Hadar. Yeah. Yeah. Which did help. Okay. Alright, so that was the end of Ralph's turn, and next is Musette. Okay, I'm gonna do my bonus action first which is casting Healing Word on um, Anastasia. Okay. She gets 1d4 plus 3. And it says, yeah. Yes, it did. Okay. So 1d4 plus 3. Uh, she gets 6 total. Okay. We're back. Okay. Uh, I've got 6 whole points. Woohoo! Yeah. And then... Thank you. Here. Okay, well, I guess I'll just uh, attack the big guy again. I'm going to do Cloud of Daggers from third level. Oh, wait, I did okay. it from fourth earlier. Yes, okay, that was correct. I'm going to do Cloud of Daggers from third level this time, which is a 64. Um, right on top of the big guy. 16 total. Yeah, okay. Wow, that's a lot.
So there's a cloud of daggers on top of the, uh, on top of that angelic Nullianac creature. And Trigovir. All right. Um, okay, so handing someone a potion, does that count as an action? Uh, you could do that as a bonus action. Okay. I would like to uh, move over here to where Zoe is. Okay. Okay. And I do have in my inventory, we never look at our inventory, and I just discovered, I have a potion of invulnerability. And it says, for one minute after you drink this potion, you have resistance to all damage. The potion's syrupy liquid looks like liquefied iron. So I would like to give this potion of invulnerability to Zoe. Okay. Okay. Yeah, easy enough to do. Zoe's lying on the ground, though, and the creature oh. doesn't realize that she's conscious yet not until her turn and she does but she's still conscious right yeah i am now yeah okay yeah. cool but you i don't know if you would even know that she's well you i guess if you well, saw... run over to her you know yeah and then if... so what do i do to that potion i remove it from my inventory yeah okay um she has resistance to all damage for one minute after she drinks it glug glug okay <laughs> Okay, got it. So make good use of it. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, appreciate you re rescuing me. Cheers. <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm gonna. Uh, I guess I should probably attack. Um, let me see. Uh, okay, I'm going back to the map, and then so I would it, like it, it, the way I'm reading what it does is it may, gives you resistance to all damage. Mm -hmm. So you take For half damage from everything. Zoe? Yeah. She takes half damage? I thought this was an invulnerability potion. Now that's For one what minute its name she... is, but that's what it does. Is it makes you take half damage from everything. Oh, I does thought it said... Res resistance to all damage. Ah, okay then. But it's an invulnerability, so you're invulnerable. You shouldn't take any damage, right? Well, I didn't name it. <laughs> right, right, okay. All right, well, in any case, I mean, she's kind of down, and that way she can still um, get just half damage. Um, I am going to attack that giant creature. I am going to okay. let's see. Go to my spells, and I'm going to throw at this guy a Numa bullet, fifth level spell, a bullet of breath force. Uh, you know, I put my hands and I go like. So on a hit, the target takes one d10 force damage, additional d10 per spell level. So this is fifth level. So. Is that six? One D ten? Come on, baby. I've got twenty-one. Uh, fourteen uh, point seven. Minus, minus two. two. That's nineteen. Nineteen. Do I hit? Uh, yeah, that just hits. Okay, so now I got to launch a one, one D ten, plus three. Okay, let's see. Six times. Wow. Okay. So the first time was four points plus forty-two. That's forty-six points. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, it's hurt pretty badly. Okay. And um, it's the beginning of a new round, and the Nullian X get to go again. I think it's B is the one fighting Ralph. It's yeah. going to do uh, Radiant Blight. 25 to hit, so I have to roll with disadvantage. But what what is Radiant Blight? It launches a, a globe of, of uh, a light at you out of its out of its uh, the fingers of its face that's supposed to hurt me yeah except he missed he missed yeah it, it has two stages actually if it gets inside of you it, it uh, eats you it's the inside your insides it happened to uh, it happened to Zoe once oh. he's going to attack Drovo with his knife I think that yeah that misses and missed again okay and <laughs> He wasn't sure that uh, that that Anastasia was awake, except he saw Chernobyl walk over and hand her a potion. Look, look, look. <laughs> well, she didn't drink it yet. It's not her turn. Oh, okay. She made the sounds. Yeah. She made the sound. Glug glug. That was that was my normal gurgling. 
Okay. A while ago, when I gave it to her, she went like, look, look, look. Yeah, well, it wasn't her turn. So he's going to do one slash against uh, Zoe with his scythe. Please, miss, please. Ugh, that's not very good. <laughs> please, miss, please, miss, please. So that's a, a, an 11 to hit. Oh, God. Uh, 11 to hit? Yeah. Well, my armor class is 17. Yeah, so he missed. He's, he's getting out of the daggers and going over here, and he's going to take a swing at Chertovir. Oh, of course. Yeah, cool, cool. I'll take it. Um, I could take it, man. I could take it. Terrible. He got a, a 12 to hit. So that misses, well, I'm, not... I'm assuming. Nobody's complaining. <laughs> okay. I'm, I could. <laughs> okay. And that's it for its turn. And now it's Zoe. You're lying on the ground. Chertovir handed you a potion. Okay, so if I drink it, is, is, is that my action? You can drink it as a bonus action. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. I'm barely hanging on, but he's... You know what? He ticked me off. So I am going to get on my screen here. Just because I want to look that little stinker right in the eye. Don't forget to drink the potion. Well, I'm doing that as a bonus action. Well, okay, fine. I'll do it as a bonus action now. Glug, glug, glug. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at big dude here, and uh, I want to do guiding bolt. Okay. You're at point blank range, so it would be with disadvantage. Yeah, but he's barely hanging on, so disadvantage yeah. or not, it should be okay. So let's see if it'll work for me. Okay. 25. And you have to roll a second time and take the lower number. Ooh. Okay. Oh, God. 18. Yeah. 18 uh, hits. Oh, woohoo! Yeah, That's exactly All right. what you needed. Okay. And then 10. Okay. 10 damage. He's that... hurt. And the next person that attacks him has advantage because he's glowing from the guiding bolt. Good. Okay. And you've taken a potion of invulnerability, which Chertovir takes issue with the name of the potion. And now it's Drovo's turn. He's going to attack this gnome, which is uh, C. 15 to hit. I think 15 hits. Yeah, it's, that's exactly what he needed. He, well, I guess he's just punching it because he dropped the silken sword on the ground. 10 but damage. So. C is down. Sword. Oh, the other one is that's by Richard is also down, right? Yeah, so he's going to run up and try to help out Ralph. He's got uh, one more attack with his that's 17 that hits and seven damage to that one. And then he's going to do Flurry of Blows. Oh, natural one. And that hits. Another 10 damage. He's not dead yet, though. Okay, and then it's Richard's turn. So, is the big one over by Chor and Anastasia still alive? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but he's glowing, so he's just, like, barely hanging on. Yeah, you'd have advantage to attack him right now. Yeah, so I'm going to move my dude right here. Okay. And I'm going uh, to grab this uh, old sword of Cassius's, and okay. I'm going to swing down with two arms. Uh, on him from behind. Is that the okay. wish sword? Yeah. It's the luck oh. blade, but I already used the wish. Okay. Okay. And you can roll again just to see if you get a critical hit. Mm, 26, two times in a row. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Roll your damage. Eight damage. Eight. And you're going to attack again? Yes, please. 13. That misses. Well, I'm missing with my second swing. Okay. Uh, Ralph. Go. No. You have a Nullianac in your face, and, and uh, Drovo came up to help you. Yay, Drovo. Thank you, Drovo. And, and, and it's looking a little beat up, more beat up now. I guess... Uh, close to death. Yeah, I think I'm just going to knock this guy around with my uh, Nascar. I use my tentacle whip. Roll to hit. Roll to hit. 16. Hits, yeah. You need a 15 with those guys. Okay. That's uh, 11 damage. 
He and had I, 10 hit points left, so... And then I, uh, oh, and then I rolled the psychic dead. damage, and that's 6. Oh, yeah, now he's double dead. And then there's... Is he dead? He's dead. Yes, yeah, serves him right. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess a bonus action. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got... Oh, I'll misty step 30 feet over here. Okay. Wait, does that the... does that use a spell, a pack slot? It says cast use. No, it doesn't use a pack slot. I can do it once per long rest. I, I thought you it. did misty escape. Yeah, they're different. Because okay. misty escape was a reaction. And then I'm going to zap on over to right here. And be like, hey guys, I'll help kill this guy now. Okay. And then I, um, I guess I have to be done. Okay. All right. Sounds <laughs> good. And now it's Musette's turn. And then Sure to be after Musette. So all we all we got left is the big guys. So I'm just going to do third level kill out of daggers. Oh. Which is 64. Do I even need it on third level? Uh, I'm probably not allowed to ask that. We'll just do it anyway. I mean, okay, he looks so... pretty hurt, but he had a lot of hit points to start with. Okay, so let's just keep with the 64. Okay, okay. so 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 is 5. 4 is 9. Uh, 12. And 4. It's 16. 12. 16. 16. Oh, 16 damage. 16 okay. damage. Gotcha. Okay. He, and he's got he's had this cloud of daggers on him three times now. It just keeps following wherever he goes. And I'm done. Okay. And Chertovir's turn. Okay, um So nothing has really got to me yet. Um Let's see. The that creature is still in front of me, right? Yeah. I with a am with daggers on it now. With a cloud of daggers. Right, 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 right. So where are the cl- where's the cloud of daggers? It's the picture of the or the yellow uh, daggers on top of it. Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to approach it and uh, let's see. I'm going to approach that guy, and I'm going to... If you do that, you're going into the cloud of daggers. Oh, okay, okay. You're okay. already you're already within reach. Of okay, okay. I'm not in reach here, am I? Yeah, you are. I am? Okay, yeah. where, where was I? I was here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Let's, uh, let's shoot him with a ray of frost. I'm going to hit him with a ray of frost. Let me roll to hit. You have to roll with disadvantage because you're at point blank range. Okay. That. So my first roll gave me 15 to hit. Then I'm going to roll again and take the smaller one. Yeah, and 15 is minus 2. 15 minus 2, 13. And then yeah. I got 12 minus 2, 10. So yeah, I got 10 to hit. Misses. Okay, great. All right. So um, can I use a bonus action to run back behind the wall? Well, that's that's just movement. That's just movement. I I guess yeah. I could just go over here then. Okay, he's gonna use a, a reaction to attack you. Do an attack of opportunity. Oh yeah, because when you retreat, you get that. Okay. Twenty-two to hit. Uh, you take eight uh, slashing damage. Eight slashing damage. You take uh, twenty necrotic damage. Okay, so twenty plus eight. That's twenty-eight points of damage. Yeah. Okay, I'm still I'm still up. I've got uh, I've got seven points of damage left. Yeah, and now it's uh, it's turn again. He is going to um, move out of the cloud of daggers to here. And Richard, you'd get an attack of opportunity because he just moved out of your uh, melee range. And I think Ralph would also. What? If you want to use your reaction to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. My reaction, which is my attack of opportunity, which yes. is my melee, yeah. which is my... your tentacle whip. Natural yeah. 20. Oh my god. 
Okay. Ralph, your tentacle whip is always out. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just like having it out. <laughs> Leave me alone, guys. Okay, roll the hit. Three. Three to hit? <laughs> well, there's a bonus for that, too. It wouldn't be just... But, Richard, what was your damage? Oh, well, then there's, yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry, so ten altogether. Okay. Still doesn't hit, right? Fourteen. No. Fourteen damage? Yeah. It is dead. It had 13 hit points. Everybody's up and all the enemies are down. Yay. I know, that was close. Can we get right. healed, please? <laughs> boy, oh boy. All right, I guess we got to lick our wounds and uh, camp out. First, let's pack up the dead guy. Yeah, let's pack up the dead guy. <laughs> Hold on. So, I want to know, is... though, what were they doing with, uh... Yeah. Video? Yeah, we didn't yeah, get a let's... chance to interrogate anybody, because they, they... I don't know, man. It's like, um, who wants to check... I'm going to check I, the body. Yeah, I'd like to check around the body to okay. see if they it's... dropped anything, because, you know, they might not have just been chanting. Can Hold one on. of you all talk to dead people? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Hold on. Oh. Five, okay. Excellent. Before we before we do this spell, okay, we get five questions. It says the corpse knows only what it knew in life. Their answers are usually brief, cryptic, or repetitive. The corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer. If you are hostile or if it recognizes you as an enemy. Okay, wait. I remember we did this before. Yes, Someone we did. So sure to beer, don't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Jonah don't exactly. say anything. It's it's First just all, like in this to movie. Yeah. We have to predetermine our very exact questions, but also someone else was able to uh, force them to speak the truth. I thought. I've got. Hang on, I've got something here. I've got zone, zone of, of truth. truth. Yeah. So you want me to go ahead and cast that? Hold on. What's our five on questions? The wing, the Joe, can you put the zoom back on so I can see people? Oh. Sorry, it's difficult. Okay, there we go. I can see people again. Okay, what's our five questions? Because we're going to ask the big guy here. Okay. So, what were they? He obviously was like the one that's in charge. Why did he's you attack the one us? who was doing the, he's what? the one who was doing whatever to the dead bodies. Okay, so did you did you say in your in your description I you, you kind of went fast. Did you, did you say they're just yes nos or uh, no, no, they don't have to be yes or no questions. Okay, I would ask. I would, I would, well, if he's chanting over a dead body, then apparently he needs to get information out of a dead body, which is kind of like what we're doing. So right. we want to know what he was asking. Exactly, or resurrected. But the uh, um, Anastasia, it said, answers are usually brief, cryptic, or repetitive, and the corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer. I guess you guys don't want to ask it who it works for or what's his name. Yeah, I okay, yeah, I think that that's a good... Solace. Okay, so question one, who do you work for? That's pretty direct. We get five questions. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, anyone else? Why did what you were you doing? Us? What did you do? What were you doing? Yeah. Oh, or uh, what? Uh, what uh, incantation? What incantation yeah. were they working on? Yeah, yes. because then that would tell us the purpose of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. We don't. Well, we didn't know if they were working on 112 or Cassius, right? We just assume it's Cassius because he's been more important. He's obviously more important. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It looked like you're standing closer to 112, though. Well, Cassius if we ask. If we ask him who, further. if we ask, well. Well, I think that would be implied in the question, like who do you work for and what incantation or what were you doing? I mean, what were you doing? It would have to tell us what he was doing. Uh, I don't know though. I think but, what were you doing is too open-ended. Yeah, what incantation he was working on. Okay. Because if you give someone too much space to move around word-wise, then they can yeah. get creative with it and just kind of right. sidestep it. Because uh, yeah. then, if you asked him what were you doing, you know, I was doing an incantation. 
Yeah, and then you have to use another question. You're right. Well, Zoe, if, it, it, Zoe might recognize the the spell if you want to do a um, an, a religion Arcana? check or oh. Arcana. Oh, okay. cool. Religion well, check. Do zone of truth yeah. too. Okay, Is zone so truth a concentration. Well, we do uh, it. At the end. Uh, it's a it's a spell slot. Uh, it is for ten minutes. It's a con- but is it a concentration? Uh, well, again, I don't see concentration on. I here. don't think so. I think it just no, stays. Level it's enchantment. Spot, but you just like do. Okay, cool. Okay, okay so, so yeah, you can shoot. You can look up then the incantation, and then we could decide the questions afterwards. The last three questions. How about what did you intend to accomplish here today? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because it kind of does the riddle, the words. Right. What are you doing? I was doing a spell. If we ask him what the intended outcome or the result was, maybe that can save us some questions. Okay. Uh, I think I that think... that should still piggyback off of the incantation question, because that would give uh, those two questions together would give us more of a complete idea. Yeah, and then we could we could reconvene and find out if we could ask more relevant questions after that. Uh, I mean, we don't have to ask him the five questions immediately, right? That's I a mean, good idea. Yeah, it says this is for 10 minutes. So, okay. so uh, we should have one person asking the questions and everyone else being silent, maybe, so we yeah. don't step on each other. Yeah, Who wants I wrote... to be the person asking the questions? Richard. Richard wants to be. <laughs> okay. All so, right. what was the first question? Who do you work for? Joe Devere. Be, you, you can be quiet. Okay. <laughs> well, oh, did, he's did you ca- the question. Have, you, have you cast it already? I have oh, not cast it yet. Oh, okay. Uh, we, okay. I, I was supposed to do the religion check to see if I recognize the incantation. <laughs> so, let yeah. me do that. Since you were, you were around while it was going on, I got a 14. Okay. Um,. It looked like, I mean, it's something you're pretty familiar with because you've done it recently. It looked like it was a raised dead spell. Okay. All right, and do you want me to go ahead and do Zone of Truth now? Okay, so Richard's going to ask the three questions that we already predetermined, and then we're going to step away. So well, we if we already so did, know what the incantation was, Did that's Zoe tell about. us what she found? Zoe just told us, yeah, it was the raised dead. Yeah, it was, okay. it was a resurrection spell. What's the first spell. question you want me to ask then? Who do you work for? I guess then we're down to two. So who do you work for and the what were you intending to do, I guess, with the resurrection spell? Well, no, because then he'll just answer, I was going to resurrect Cassius. Well, what was your... Isn't, I liked how Richard worded it like... Uh, it was worded differently. How, it was worded uh, what did you... What was your intended... What did you intend to accomplish? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Today or something like that. What did you intend? What did you intend to accomplish here today? And for what purpose? Or is that okay? I'm right. I'm messing it up already. All right. Okay, sorry. Richard's got it. Okay, All I'm right. going to hit the cast spell for Speak with Dead. Okay, and I'm clicking on Zone of Truth. Okay. Okay. Cast Speak with Dead. Okay, so does the beast wriggle or stand up or is he just lay there oh, still okay yeah yeah so it uh the semblance it's, of it's lying there help. and the the two eye stalks the the big long thumb you know eye stalks look up t- uh towards musette beast who do you work for it says i work for the unbeheld And then I like step away and I'm like, did you guys hear that? Did you hear what he answered? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to my friends, not to the beast. Right, right, right. <laughs> but you're so, talking out loud, right? No, like I'm like whispering over here where they can't hear. I'm like, did you guys hear okay. All right. Beast. Well, um, make a, uh, let's see. Uh-huh. Make a deception check. Deception. Yeah. Natural 20, baby. Okay, yeah, it didn't hear you. <laughs> uh, we'll see. All right, Beast. What did you intend to achieve here today? To return the hand of the unbeheld to my master. 
So let's move away from him. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking in absolutes to avoid, you know, where am I? Oh, I'm still hiding. You're way back over here to me. Yeah, there we go. And the circle is what he can hear, right? I guess, Rob. The circle is zone of truth. That's just the zone of truth. Oh, that's the zone of truth. Anyone in it is subject to it. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna make perception checks to see if he can hear you. Okay. Sure, Devir, you need to move away from him. Okay. I'm gonna go into the city and get closer to you guys over here. There. Okay. Oh, you how you moved Drovo too? Oh, cool. Okay, so now I moved Drovo. We're, we are oh, now okay. speaking in hushed tones. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. What do I want? What do we want our last three questions to be? Where is he? Where is your master? So, so um, he was trying to raise the dead. He was trying to raise the hand of, of Apexamendios, right? So the hand was it the Nullianak, or was it Cassius? I would ask, what is the hand? And then we can take the hand, and now it is ours. You guys already knew which one yeah. the hand. Yeah, I think the hand was a Nullianac, right? Yeah, it's 112. It's, it's 112. It 112. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he was trying to raise 112, which was a really hard monster to kill, uh, to return him to his master. So I think the Nullianacs have some sort of connection to Apexamendios, right? Um, hmm. So we stopped that, which is a good thing. Anybody have any ideas about? Well, we know he works for the unbeheld, so that means that the unbeheld is probably still having some first. sort of influence, right? Maybe in the first. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's he where he died. Uh, he is the first. That's right. So, um, hmm. Well, we know that the wings were missing because the body was gone. There was a dragon. Right. The body was gone, though, because that was where we first got attacked right. yesterday. I'm wondering if the house ate the dragon, you know, that, that that big house. It looked like it had quite an appetite, so I'm not sure if the house was the one that ate the dragon. Um, hmm. I'm just imagining yes. that. You could heart. investigate that on your way back. Sure, sure. Okay. I'm sorry. I refresh my memory. Is the last piece was the heart? Yes. Where was the heart? Yeah, the, yep. the last time you asked questions, they said in the First Dominion. Okay, yeah. So if the heart is in the First Dominion, then that's where Peximendius probably is, like like Maddie, uh, like Richard was saying. Why don't we ask him? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. All right. You want to ask where's the heart or where's the unbeheld? I should ask him, like, he said for his master. He didn't say for my master, the MBL, but we assume well, that his master is the MBL. You said, who do you work for? He said the MBL. Oh, uh, yeah. What do you accomplish here to bring us back to my master? Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So should I ask, where is the MBL? Yes, you should. Location? Yes. Where is your where master? Is the no, he, ju- he just answered your question. Okay. Oh. Ah, man. You just, you just moved right up next to him and asked a question. What okay, do you Okay, so fine. So- we only have two questions left now. You have oh. one question left now. Oh, one? Yeah. yeah Richard, you moved close to him and you said that out loud. So he asked, thought you were asking the question. Yeah. 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 What? Okay. Um, all right. So I guess we got one more question. I mean, and he didn't even really answer, did he? He just said, yeah. oh, I get it because of the way he asked the question. Are, are you yelling this stuff so Richard can hear you? No. I don't know why Richard went over there, to be honest. We were all huddling over here. I was going to ask him a question. Now. <laughs> uh, Cause we were discussing what to ask him, right? Um, yeah. yeah. What's the, what's the next? We got one more question. Oh, okay. Richard came back. I think we should just ask him where the unbeheld is. Ben. Okay. Where's the heart of the unbeheld? Or where can, where can we find the heart of the unbeheld? No, because he's probably going to say in the first, and then we'll be like, shucks. Um, we're still huddling here where he can't hear us, so. You don't know that he can't hear you. Oh, has he been running perception checks? Yeah. 
We should oh. ask it something to the effect of how do we reach the unbeheld? Something. How like do that. how do we find the heart of the unbeheld? Maybe. How do we gain access to the unbeheld? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Because if he's if we ask him where is the unbeheld, he's gonna be like first dominion. Yeah. Cool. How do we right. get to it? How do we get to the unbeheld? Do we just do we just walk through? Okay, so now someone wants to walk over to him and ask him that? Well, I don't know if that's what we should ask. I'm fine with so, it. So, Chirdovir would, and Drovo would know that you can just walk into the First Dominion, but it's like a big ocean. Yeah. So it's like going to the breathe beach. underwater, I can give that to people. Sorry. How about we ask you something like, something like what what would be the worst thing that we could do to stop you from doing what you're trying to accomplish or something like that? Hmm. You know, I think we should just ask him the the unbeheld question that you that you uh, formulated. How do we get to the heart of the unbeheld? Are we including the heart or are we not including the heart? I mean, because we're not asking him where it is because that would give him a chance to say, uh, oh, it's in the first. If we say, how do we get to the heart? Hopefully he would give us some directions, but I guess he could always just say, this is the part about this game that it's just kind of hard to, because uh, it can be subverted so quickly, this whole spell thing, because he can just be like, well, you just walk through there. And it's like, okay, that doesn't really answer my question. Um, yeah, but I mean, we're only on the last question. And also, you know, I mean, everyone here is pretty- Yeah, I mean, we can only get so much information well, with one question. And- how right, do we exactly. obtain the heart? Okay, yeah, let's just go with that one. Go, Richard, go. Go, Richard, go. <laughs> Beast, how, do we obt- how do we obtain the heart of the unbeheld? You're not strong enough. That wasn't you an can't. answer to my question. I can't? So did he just, like, crumble back to sleep to death? Yeah, he, that's it. His eye stalks fell flat on the ground. Wow, guys. That's, that uh, was riveting. I kick him. Yeah. Hey, you know what? We still know more than we did. And also, we need to uh, pack up 112 and bring it with us. I thought we'd keep it Cassius. Cassius, Cassius, yeah. I guess we're taking both of them now. We should totally take both of them because we came for Cassius but found out the minions are back and they're trying to do some... Right. Yeah. Should we try... We can probably just just strap them on the hood. Well... (laughs) <laughs> well, think about it, guys. Are we going to take the, these corpses back? I mean, uh, we don't have that much space. Also, where do you want to keep them at the base? Maybe we could just make a pyre and burn 112. Maybe try to destroy him, destroy his body. Well, let's just tie them to the roof. Yeah. And let well, the birds eat at 112 as we go home. The I van mean, holds nine. I figured Yeah, that should be big enough. There's six of us. Yeah, I'm I just think... scared that minions are going to track us to where our headquarter is and try to try to get to his body there. That would be, well, I guess we're we'll be at our headquarters, so I don't know. If you guys want to take him back, we can. I, I would rather just him destroy back. him. Okay. All right, so let me see if I can contact uh, Augustus again. Um, okay. Yeah, make an intelligence check minus two. Intelligence check minus two. God damn it. Seven. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> okay. I guess we'll pack these uh, we'll pack these corpses up and we'll uh put them on top of the van. This is this sounds so gross. <laughs> I, I don't wanna looking uh, out like Aunt Edna. <laughs> I'll do it. No, yeah. Yeah, try take not to bam- take any chunks out of them. This is so gross. Who, who's the smallest one, Cassius? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we got to put him at the bottom. Did, any, did anybody remember to pack some tarps or something? Nope. We got your robe. Just sit him in the back seat. No. We'll all sit on the roof. We'll roll the windows down. Okay, let's 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 do that. Let's. Well, let's you put have him like a roof. hatchback sort of a trunk yeah. deal. Okay, let's throw him in the trunk. I can't pick up one twelve. Let's back the truck up to it, and then just kind of lift him into it. We beep, can... beep, yes. beep. <laughs> Everybody get out of the way. It's more All right. of a minivan. Okay. Okay. So we put the bodies in there. Um, Where's the van? It's okay. outside of the walls. Yeah. Okay. North a little bit. Yep, yep, yep. 
It's right here. Oh my okay. god. It's like we went hunting. There, there oh, we go. Yeah. <laughs> this okay, is who's the up. next smallest? This is messed up, guys. All right, can, so. Because it's these guys. Can we loot this area or anything? What, yeah, so, uh, I want to check. Uh, we already looted them, right? When we killed them the first time. Yeah, but there's four more million acts and a big. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Bat wing boy. I I'd yeah. like to uh, loot the body of the giant creature. Yeah. Um, so the giant creature has a, a a big scythe that looks like it's sort of religious talisman. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And so some of you have been hit by it. Mm -hmm. I think I want that. All right. You get a scythe, and you get a you scythe. Get a... <laughs> okay. Okay. You get this scythe. Um, can I Thank use? You. Can it I also use identify? Has a, a scroll of raised dead. Okay, scroll oh, yeah. of raised dead. Um, you want to hold on to that, Musette? Okay. Yeah, so, somebody besides me needs to be able to raise people because if something happens, we got to back right. it up. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So Musette takes that. Uh, this goes to Zoe. And uh, Ryan, I have, um, or I'm sorry. DM, I've got an identify spell. Can I use the identify spell on the uh, scythe to know what it is? Okay. Uh, you, you could, but right now I don't really know much about it because it's just it's a it's a okay. part of the monster's you know damage. But, right. So I'll, I, it'll take me a bit to create something for that. Yeah, we're all messed up, so we can take I... that. Yeah. Is there a special name for that scythe? Customize. Uh, there will be once I just once I figure it okay. out. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know. Super size me. And just to be uh, sure, did we put the bodies in a trunk or are they exposed to anybody who passes the car? Well, I put Cassius on the roof of the car. Okay. Uh, you can probably fit them in the in the trunk. I can't seem to get one twelve up though. Okay. All right. Um, all right, guys, I think we should probably stick around here, try to work out our uh, wounds and stuff, and then investigate Durther City to see, you know, go to the consulate and all that stuff, see if we can set up the portal. Maybe that would allow us to go back to Jericho without having, oh, wait, no, yeah, we got to take, we got to take the bodies there. But we could probably put the bodies there and take them to Jericho base with someone and then someone else could drive the car. What do you guys think? Sounds good. We got to investigate this disturbance, uh, the disappearance of all the people. Yeah. Like, it, there could be a console, but it could be an empty building. I feel like the whole entire town's ghost city. All right. I think that should be the plan. If you guys agree with that, let's uh, let's camp here. And uh, and then after we, uh, we get a long rest, we can probably verify the rest of the city and uh, set that up for the portal. Okay, and we we can stop there, and we'll uh, we'll we'll do the investigation next time. Okay, all right. This was uh, I think we fell right into it again. It was pretty good. I mean, I did make a few mistakes, like running out of the the tiny hut and stuff. But uh, I think it was uh, it was pretty good. Pretty good game. Very fun. Yeah, thank you. And the notes about the refresher notes that you posted were really helpful for me. I know. Yay! All right. Well, we'll keep uh, we'll keep this up on the next episode, and I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. And I hope you guys enjoy the game and uh, have a great weekend. Bye. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our Discord server. The best way to support us is to buy our book, The Barker Cast Interviews, Occupy Midian, available in hardcover on Amazon and ebook on Amazon and Apple Books. 
Fundraiser 10 is all about Patreon this year. Become a patron to get access to exclusive stuff. Pick an episode topic and maybe even get cool stuff in the mail. You can also buy a t-shirt on our Tee Public store. Go to tpublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Leave a message for us using the speak pipe link on our blog. Opening and ending music generously provided by Ray Norrish. Thanks for listening.